All right, here we are. It's the first time I've done this in a, a while again. It's good to be back. Um, I'm gonna have some special guests here. I just sent a link to a bunch of cartoonists and we're gonna see who shows up. Uh, we have our, <laughs> the first person that showed up. <laughs> uh, Josh, how you doing, man? What's going on, Noah? It's good to see you. A little too eager. You're a little too eager? Yeah, I think joining a, on the dot. Oh, yeah. No, it's, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm happy. I don't like doing this stuff alone because I don't have that much to talk about. Yeah, yeah. That's the worry, right? Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I don't know. So I just I just basically felt like I should get something. I mean, I have like the, the house to myself this evening. Uh, I was either I could draw or I could just uh, dick around on YouTube. So, yeah, yeah. This is what I chose to do. Uh, let's see. Oh, cool. Thanks, Aaron. We got some people in here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we got Nate Whoa. Garcia. Oh, it's dark as hell. <laughs> What's up, Nate? Oh. What's up, Josh? Hey, Josh, I'm in. Oh, that's good. I've gone small now. That's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, what's, nice. what's a good layout here? Is that There's hard? no good. Oh. I do this with my... The clouds are so nice. Oh, thanks. For um, a background. Uh, do you guys uh, do YouTube a lot? No. But no. you got this from... I got this from McDonald's the other day. Happy Meal. Uh, they're really... They're going... They're going all out still with each toy. I'll what show is it. it. It's a robot. Oh. Who fucking knows? I think it's some. I think it's some bullshit for for recycling. But ain't no one recycling that shit. So. All right. Uh. The Brian from Bubbles. What's up, Brian? Oh, Man, I, I literally just got this invite like at six fifty nine. I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll join. <laughs> cool, man. It's good to see you. What's up, guys? Uh, nothing much. You know what's weird is like I I was like all amped to do this stream, uh, like two hours ago. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna set up a stream. It'll be so much fun. And then like as the hours started getting closer, I was like, oh, shit, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Um, okay, then we'll stop. Yeah, we can go. Hey, Caitlin. My girl. Uh, can I bring in one more guest? Do you guys mind? Who is Please it? bring them all in. Bring in the lions. <laughs> Hello, Ennis. Oh. Hi. <laughs> What's going Are on? you using your computer? Yeah. This is. Do you have a computer on your desk? I have a laptop. Oh damn! <laughs> where, where Glad I could one? accelerate you tonight. <laughs> That's cool. Is that a, the same apartment complex you lived in, in in Columbus that I was in? No, I did what you did, Noah, and I moved to Columbus and found a honey, and now I'm living with my honey. So <laughs> this is my like attic studio that i have now um and like the house that i live in oh, it's pretty okay. great yeah what cool, cool angles yeah 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 you ever hit your head oh yeah no that's uh the corner that smells like cat shit because my cat shit's back there uh on the floor a lot it's great um but yeah no i think a kid did homeschooling up here because there's like kids stickers all over the ceiling and shit it's very weird are those uh glow-in-the-dark stars yeah, and I just left them up because I'm like, fuck it. And it's probably going to pull the ceiling away with it. This is fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's dope. It's really cold here right now, though, in Ohio. It's doing its thing where it seesaws back and forth. But hopefully it'll be warm when Nate comes up at the end of the week. So That is the end of the week. I bought that bus week. ticket. Brian, what did you have for breakfast today? The same as always. The shredded wheat, iced coffee, milk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate, that's, is that like a, that's a question you ask everybody, right? Because I mean, you asked me that one time, and I was thrown off by yeah, it. Yeah, you're not the only one. I ask a lot. Of, <laughs> I, <laughs> I ask everybody. I, I think it says a lot. Really? Yeah, well, yeah. No. I've never mean? once asked it in one of my interviews. 
Yeah. I you have no <laughs> idea how excited I am to like ask you what you want for breakfast at my house. I want whatever's there. <laughs> I have everything. I have like a mm. soccer mom level kitchen and pantry. So yeah, went, what kind I of I went snacks? to fucking Costco the other day and like got shit for everybody when they come. Do you ever get pizza when you go there? Were they, were they really cheap pizza slices? It's so good. No, they're At smoothies. Costco. Sometimes I get their smoothies, but I'm usually trying to pretend like I'm too good to to eat their hot cheese. Oh, I'm and not shit. too good for that. Oh, it's just like 900 calories. So good. Well, I'm gonna take you have. to Costco for breakfast. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> We're what just talking you- about Costco. <laughs> You're going to Columbus, Ohio. Is there like a, a show or something that's going on there? Oh yeah. There's like a group show. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot. We're all doing live readings for. Uh, there's gonna be Patrick Ian Rooks, MS, me, Cam, Cam. That's right. Of course, I'm Caroline blank. Cash. I'm How blanking now. Cameron Cash is coming. Yeah, that's right. Is this a part of the the cartoonist getaway thing that you do, Marina? No. Um, Nate Garcia, no. Cam texted me, I think, or or oh, yeah, Nate was, texted yeah. me and was like, because you were like, oh, I want to do a show in Louisville and I want to do a show in Columbus. And I was like, I can't think of anyone other than Cam that lives in Louisville. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Well, me and Cam so, are gonna do one at the comic shop there, but I doubt okay. that. But yeah, no, you're coming was, up here, and yeah. we're doing a huge like a uh, banger of a show where I'm just like asking me, like, what do you want? And he's like, I want Carolyn Cash there. So I'm like, okay, Carolyn, what yeah. are you doing? So Heck most yeah. people are coming down, and it, it should be super fun. So everyone, I think, but me has like a new thing out. So it's like everyone, everyone's debuting wanted. their mini on the same yeah. day. You still have time to make something. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm drawing dudes fighting each other right now for 20 <laughs> pages. I think I'm just going to keep keep, uh, keep on trucking with that. What is Nate, it? Nate, Nate, how was your release party? Oh, it was very fun. No deaths. Okay. <laughs> no deaths. I was the only one not drinking beer. I was drunk off LaCroix, though. It was very nice. I like LaCroix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Partners and son, Gina and Tom. Oh, look, Josh is drinking it. What flavor? Peach, peach, pear. No, wait. It's double peach? Wait, why did I think it was double peach? Yeah, it's just peach, pear. Yum. Hey, wait, Josh. That... Oh. Uh, sorry. I have I have uh, only three issues of goiter. I have uh, number, uh, is this five? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the best one. Number six. And then the newest one, number seven. And each, each I've got one, they're all published by a different publisher. Yeah, <laughs> just like hard to work with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's always like a timing thing. Like, I don't have the patience. Like, if, you know, somebody's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put out a bunch of books in, you know, four months or something. I don't want to wait. So I'll just, you know. Put it somewhere else or do it myself, whatever. Yeah, you're 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 too productive for indie publishers. That's what it is. I don't know. I feel like I'm the slowest, at least here, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel very slow. Are you still throwing out like whole pages of work <laughs> because you like <laughs> don't like them? <laughs> no, I actually um I stopped doing that. Um, That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good behavior. <laughs> Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> like the first three Hi, issues, Gemma. I think like each page is redrawn about four times. Yeah. In the newest issue? No, like the old issues. I stopped. Like I stopped doing that. Like uh, obsessively redrawing everything. Yeah. That's good for long term health. <laughs> Are you in Josh? You're in LA because there's the the comic in here that um, Simon Hanselman did. Yeah, yeah. Is true? Is that real? You guys drawn together? Yeah, he made like, it up. I go to his house on uh, Tuesdays and we draw. Okay. Oh yeah, that's the comic that's in. Uh... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the, like the thing I would grab in a fire. <laughs> it's so fucking small. 
I don't know about that name. It's just a normal comic page. It looks small, but in a good way compared to what, yeah. compared to what you do, Josh. I do a small I do a yeah. I do 11 wow. by 17. How big are your originals, Josh? Uh, 11 by 17. Oh, okay. So that's your standard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have one on my wall. Same. I would, I would grab it in a fire. I would not grab mine in a fire because I have one of the goddamn outtake pages. I get yeah. Josh wanted to trade a page with me and I didn't want to, but I thought, okay, if he's gonna be one of his. Pages, Damn, you're really I'll do dragging it. him for this one right here. <laughs> if I said if it's gonna be one of his pages, I'll do it because it, it's worth it for both of us. But but then I open the mail, the the box, and it's a goddamn outtake page. It wasn't even in the book. Damn, dude, you're you're really come on. I, I'm gonna say something nice. <sighs> Josh now I'm mad. made a really nice comic and I own it and I hung out with him actually like a couple weeks ago in LA. It was great. And uh what did yeah, you get a new page? Fun. That was a great day. That was a what fun day. What were you doing in LA, Brian? Man, I just went to hang out. I hadn't been there in a long time. <laughs> yeah. I and would... I hung out with Josh and Simon and I watched them. Uh, I distracted them actually. So if like Josh's next issue is like a week late, it's cause I, I made him just hang out with me for like four or five hours and not draw. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. What did you guys eat over there? Cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just Jack, cheese? Jack, Jack, uh, Jack Simon's, uh, wife made yeah. uh, this epic cheese plate. Yeah, Whoa. yeah, with like crackers and stuff, with like fruit and stuff too, with like some like crackers, uh, fancy meat, bread, meats, all this, you know. Yeah, but Josh, did you? Was it vegan cheese? Was it vegan? No, meat? Uh, Jack even went out and got uh, vegan meat and vegan cheese for me. Oh my god! Yeah, it was yeah. Really nice. goddamn diva. Hey, Nate, will you show me your new comic? Yeah, it's in the back. I'm copying Josh. You see his setup? Don't call me at only. Yeah. <laughs> Muscle horse. Is that yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um a guy has sex with a pierogi. I'm not gonna show that part, but I'm sure you can just imagine. When when yeah. do I get mine? I don't have mine. I know. I really screwed up. Tell me why. <laughs> I really screwed up. I did uh I did it as a pre-sale. Um, so I wouldn't lose any cash. And I was, I, was, I said in the description, it would take two weeks, but then, then I oversold and, and now I have all the books, but like, they're not for the people that bought them. So they're for like, I bought, cause I'm, cause I'm doing a thing in Ohio with MS and I needed to get books for that. And then I sent some to some stores too. Yeah. Oh, that? yeah, that's because of the paper shortage. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good one. that's a good gag. It really <laughs> never gets old. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait. So, I got one of these. So, you had, dolls did you order finally. more? What? Did you order more? Yeah, I ordered, I ordered more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's going to be, like, half the people that bought them are going to have to. It's so fucked. Half the people that bought them are going to have to wait more. Honestly, I was unprepared. I bet no one will know this. They'll just no, be excited I, when it comes. Life just flies email. by. I forgot I that I haven't even gotten it. I wouldn't have remembered unless I just was on this chat. So that's good. It's it's okay. I'll see how long I can stretch that. I I, I stress myself on shipping times too. I just wrote a note to ship something just now. Oh, all do right, you have right. do you have more to do lists on your on your thingy right there? I got tons. I I don't. Uh, yeah, I got more to do lists, but yeah, I have another one right here. Noah, do you write to-do lists? I don't. No. Really? No. Man, I'm hopeless with that. How one. do you? Yeah. How do you get anything? How do you? What about Marina or Josh? Do you guys make lists? No, I just. Uh, Y'all are using my government name. Like it's not even a big deal. Sorry, MS. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My mom has MS, so. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just well, she does, but it's is a, you know. Well, all these like comic books, I, it makes me really want to get like another issue of Blamo done, but um, I just can't. I can't do it. It's like easier to do a book than it is to finish an issue of, of Blamo at this point. What the Wait, fuck? don't you have one new one coming out? 
supposed to, but I, I threw out the main because like in every issue of Blammo, I like to have like the main story and then like some shorter things. Yeah, and, uh, I just can't. I just threw out the main story on it because it, it just wasn't working. I just thought it why is it you just like think too big now or like? Why just, is that? Yeah, it's just too much pressure. I, think. I don't know. Well, if someone hired you to do a comic called Blammo, like if I a had a po- full book. Like how you got hired to, you know, do like a Cheech and Chong comic or something. I, I'll hire you and be like, oh, I have this great idea called Blamo. Yeah, well, if there's money in then, it. <laughs> then you'll knock it out. Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. I I, I, uh, I think of Blamo as like it needs to be like the best art that I can do at that time, like the best like writing I can do at the time. Uh, yeah. I want like every issue to like, I want people to be able to like read the back issues and tell that like it's getting better and better as it goes along. And so because I put that um, pressure on myself, it's like impossible to finish it. So I have like most of an issue um, in my flat file for, for it was supposed to come out in the spring. Um, and then I just uh, was going to do this big story about going on a road trip with John P. And it just it just wasn't working, man. So I, I just threw the story up on my Patreon, like all the pages that I had thrown out of that story. I just put them on my Patreon and as a way of saying like okay well now everybody's seen you know some people have seen this so it's kind of like it's not gonna tempt me to ever publish it um and i'm just wait gonna start over. is it is it the story about you guys doing going to the mormon town uh no it's about uh you know i used to do these like road trips with john p across the country and like we'd set up signings all over the place and then do like comic readings and then hopefully sell our comics afterwards so we oh, would just go for like a month at a time you know yeah, and I, I want to do that, a comic about that. We did two major, two main ones, like one in 2009, and then one in 2011. So I wanted to do it like as like a two part story. Like one 2009 would be in this issue, and then 2011's trip would be like in the next issue of Blamo, and it would be like, uh, like a cartooning version of like Jack Kerouac's like on the road, you know, just like fucking crazy. Because <laughs> then it's like at the end of that, it's basically John and I. Uh, you know, like John has moved to uh, Illinois and, or, or Wisconsin at the time. And like, we are not as close as we were in Denver, you know, so that would, that would be the whole thing. But um, I just, I, I think I overthought it and then I just couldn't, uh, couldn't finish it. So. Well, maybe you could do it as a book. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, uh, here's, this is from, it's going to work. It's not going to work. I wanted to see if I could share it on the screen, but I guess I can't do it. Hmm. There's you don't have the share button. Did it not work? Oh, oh, great. oh awesome! Oh. All right, now so, it's like you're giving a presentation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my on my Patreon right here. This is what people on my my actual Patreon see. So I just like gave it away. Like I had like ten pages of it done. Um. Uh, it's probably abandoned it. So. It was called Hot Loving Every Night, which is a title. <laughs> that's of- an awesome page. Fuck, I saw back- this on yeah, Facebook. I was going to say, that, that intro panel is really cute. I just had the full screen. Can you go to the next one? So this is the next one. This, this is, is my bedroom. Oh, room. man. This is you awesome. you just threw these all out? You just gave them all up? Yeah, they're my flat file now. I took them out of the, um, out of the binder. This kind of reminds me of the thing that... Uh, I don't even know if I have one. The Jasper drawing that he did for my, I did like a free comic and there's oh, like yeah. a little kid surrounded. It's beautiful. Dude, well, I, I just, still find new shit in that drawing. It's so good. I just wanted to sum up like what the comic scene was like when I first got into it, you know? like Yeah. I, and it was just like, this was the alternative comic scene of like the early 2000s, you know? So this is all the stuff I like, doing. I like your Glenn Ganges a lot. <laughs> Wait, what's the baby? <laughs> Is that Up Sammy here? Harkum? Yeah. That's uh, Chris Ware. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> me. That was like the biggest book ever back then, you know? Um, I was not born. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you were actually probably really... How old are you, Nate? 19. Oh, yeah. All right. 2002. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, all so re- cool. we all remember 2002. I know, yeah. right? Me too. This is awesome, bro. <laughs> this dude's fingernails. Oh, this fuck. happened at a, a show. John had like really bad OCD. Oh. This guy came by with like really long, crusty fingernails on, on his hand and just started going through all of John's comics. And John just watched in horror. 
Fuck, but they weren't that long though, were they? No, they really were. Yeah, they were like brown, long, oh, like long. Man. Dude, some people got. I, I used to work at a convenience store, and I knew some people that had nails like that. They would always need help using their wallet and things. I would scream at someone if they touched my stuff and they had that. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you just hit him. No, maybe not. Anyway, this you know, so this is one of the problems that I had with this. The way that I was telling it was that I was using narration, and then I felt like what I should do is go in and explain like what the comics um, scene was like at that time. And that means like how nerd culture was becoming really big at the time. And that, I, I shouldn't have even done that, but I just got so I get really amped on like making fun of like the nerd culture of that time. So like uh, in the, in the way the comic book shops treated us and stuff. Oh, so I, I love that though. I, it just doesn't, you know, it's a weird tangent to get into in the middle of the story about being on the road, you know? Yeah. Did you wait? You felt like you could. You didn't want to. You felt guilty for leaning into it. Um, it just. Um, I don't know. It's just too much shit talking in the middle of the story, you know. Yeah, yeah. This really happened. By there was a juggalo. We were sleeping <laughs> in a Walmart parking lot, and there was a juggalo in there, like just like in our like looking in our car. Um, and I looked over, and John was asleep, but John wasn't asleep. Like the next morning, he was like. <laughs> Where were you? In, were you in Michigan? No, we were in uh, Montana, I think. Right here, yeah. Juggalo, Juggalo cassette tape. <laughs> what? Let me see that. Do you really have one? Hell yeah, that's the Ringmaster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That fucking rocks so hard. <laughs> Why do you have that? <laughs> Maybe because he likes it. Someone gave it to me, but you know, that's the first one. The first one, it kind of goes. The best thing about ICP is when they revealed that they're Christians. They were a Christian rock band, or you know, a Christian, uh, whatever, new metal band, or whatever they are. Oh, I, I heard they're good people. I really liked when everyone made fun of them about the magnets, but then they came out and were like, "Look, if you can't relate to being young and thinking magnets are magic, then fuck you." And I thought that was like the coolest thing. I was like, yeah, like. Did anyone else go to the SPX where the Juggalos and the Nazis were going to fight each other? What? Oh Do you God. remember this, Brian? No, no not me. There I... was a Unite the Right rally in D.C. like the same weekend as SPX. And then the oh. Juggalos promised to fight the Unite the Right rally at the same time. In, in 2019? I, no. think it, Wait, I think it, it was, was like president... 2016 or 2017. Uh, like in I don't that know if time I was at frame. SPX. I remember ben... when the Juggalos marched on Washington. It was it was because of that. And Ben Passmore was like, fuck SPX. I'm just going to go march with the Juggalos. And we're like, Wait, what? <laughs> just like came back and reported on it. It was really great. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Did he pay for a table already? Was he tabling? Yeah, but he's like, I don't give a fuck. Like... That's a lot of money, though. We probably just just get special guests, oh, knowing oh, that oh. time frame and his That's career right. or whatever. Uh, are you guys doing any shows this year, or are you afraid to, to do it? Yeah, I have one kind of permanent damage in LA. Nate's doing that one. That's good. Like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be table with Jasper. Uh, we did that in like we did another one of those in uh, December. It was like a lot of fun. It was outside. Like these small ones that are popping up are really cool, but. Yeah, I'm trying to like apply to every place at the moment that's like uh, a table in. Is hmm. anyone gonna do space in Columbus? I'm not. Wait, I can't. What's do it. space? Oh, I applied it's... for CXC. Okay, yes. it's um the small press alternative comic expo it's like the longest running like goofiest uh, in the way of like oh, there's wait, no I I no curation. That. You just show up. And there'll be juggalos there. There'll be people with their like sci fi novels. There'll be me. There'll be Carol Tyler. It's really random. Um, I, 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 uh, I had a table for that, but then they, um, they like, they, they canceled it, right? They and rearranged they, it. And then yeah. they have, they've, they're changing their venue because of something. It's going to be the yeah. fairgrounds in Columbus. Now. I just got a refund instead because I think it was like very short notice that they uh, like announced it was going to be happening. 
Yeah, Bob's pretty informal with his email stories. Like, I don't know if you, if I gave you your money back, so just let me know if I didn't. <sighs> and it's like, okay. Um, but no, I'm gonna do the like a post retreat thing again, like what we did last year, Brian. So if any of you guys want to come up for that, it'll probably be very similar. When is Maybe it? A little bit nicer. Um, like around the same time. It's not gonna be on Labor Day. I think it's gonna be on like a Friday night. So it'll be well, a little bit weird. But what I'm gonna try month? and get like food and drink around. I don't remember. What month is Labor Day in? That's like the end of August, but I think it'll be like September 2nd or something, like whatever that Friday is. So it won't be an all day thing, but I'm going to try and like get normie ass people around with like alcohol and food because usually that's good. So, yeah. Um, Everybody uh, that, uh, that I'm changing the subject here. Uh, no, it's cool. Everybody that went to Angoulême got sick. Do you guys see that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Wait, did did Eric Reynolds get sick? Like, yeah, actually? He's, he, I think he's still in his basement recovering. Oh my God, can he breathe? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I just got. I had my whole family had it last week. I just got over it. Oh, uh, still haven't got it. Oh somehow. man, I thought it was over. Was it rough, Noah? How was it? No, you know, I yeah, it's like it was Omicron or whatever. So it's like a. It was too mild. <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, cold and I'm, I'm boosted and all that shit, but like my son had it and it was the first time he's ever been sick. So it was oh, really man. Crazy. He's just a little baby. So he had it worse than my wife and I had. Um, Jesus Christ. But, uh, yeah, we're all better now. But, you know, uh, I was just talking to uh, Conrad Groth on Instagram, Gary Groth's son, and he's still in Angoulême because he got, he got COVID. I no. Just, uh, yeah. Wow. How do you... Because then you're stuck there. You got to find how to get food. You got to find how to stay in a house somewhere. Yeah, you're for free stuck there for, weeks. for two weeks, I think. Right? I think that's how long they keep you. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so. Speaking crazy. of uh, COVID, Brian, did you get that uh, crumb COVID comic yet? <laughs> huh? It yeah. hasn't come. It hasn't come yet. I haven't got mine either. Yet. I can't I believe you're going to put me on blast. Yeah, I bought one. I'm putting you on blast. I, I, I bought one too. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't know I you could buy it. I don't think it's bad to be curious enough to buy it. I don't think that's a bad thing. No, no, no. I'm curious. It. I think it's it. Uh, the drawings I've seen from it look insane. So yeah. well, that's the thing. Is uh, like the drawings. That's like it's it. Like I was looking at the drawings, and it's like this is his best stuff. Like mm -hmm. visually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about the yeah. content. That might be a bit like dicey, <laughs> but it's interesting because I think his wife and his daughter are also involved in the comic. So. I don't know. Yeah. We'll just have to see. I'm sure TCJ will write a review, and everyone will. It'll it'll come. But yeah. I only saw the cover. I thought it wasn't even announced or something. I just no, saw a picture of it. It's and I was out. so shocked. But David's was... David's winner is that the name of the publisher? Because they have like a, a an exhibit in France, I think, for like the whole family ah. for that exhibit. But there's only wow. a few. There's only a few hundred copies, I think, or something. And then of the book. Yeah, the it's like a little zine, like a mini comic. Was oh. Crum at Was Crum at Angoulême? <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't know if you were. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who the guests were. I just saw that uh, Julie Doucet won the grand prize. It's pretty awesome. That is awesome. I, I, that was. I just got her new book, and I have this. Like, did you guys know she makes like zines? Like you can just she makes these like I'm gonna show you. Yeah, she's just a web store, right? Oh man. Oh well. This is like yeah, a zine that's that. or you got time it's like an, J. This is like a zine that's an edition of a hundred that came out in January of 2020, 2020. And oh. for some and somehow <laughs> these were still for sale on their web store. I just bought one. And this is basically a rough draft of what her book is. Which, if, if you've seen the book, the book it looks. How do you have a copy of that already? I have one. What? Drawing... It was on. It was at Laughing Ogre. I don't know how they had it. They just wow. had it out. Yeah, I think my local shop had it, but I, they sent me one. But wow, that stuff is incredible. Copy that online, it's like still pre-order. So really, yeah. yeah, I don't know why they. The had pages it out. are crazy. They like they fold like signatures. They're, they're like this. Is that so? Like the page is like one. It makes it like one long thing. Oh wow! It's a really interesting binding. Uh, it's really cool. 
Those is it are yeah. are probably crazy, man. I, I yeah, I want to know how long it is. I think it's just like maybe she draws on one really long piece of paper. I don't know. But yeah, is it what the story fuck? or is it just art? This is it like an actual story? The book? The book is it's kind of like abstract, but it tells a story about like a relationship, like a long distance relationship. But it it also reads from the bottom to the top. Like I think she drew it where she drew the bottom and then she would draw up. And so the comic actually reads up and then up. Huh. Yeah, it, it like warns you at the beginning, like <laughs> or it just tells you that it's just the book was drawn from bottom to top. Please read accordingly. Hmm. That's so badass. So it's a pretty interesting book. I definitely recommend everyone pick it up. It's really cool. I got this and then she won like just a few, like a week or two later, and I was like, "Yeah, it's really it's rad." Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hi. Uh, Hello, Corinne. Hey. You Hi. guys are having me. No, no him, no Corinne. No. Nope. But but uh, <laughs> the awesome cartoonist, illustrator. I don't know. <laughs> I've had him on my channel before. Cool. Good dude. <laughs> so you I, got I'm, the, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Bubble Ready? boy. So I built you, these you, shells. You were trying to really do set because of the uh, Angoulême win, or is unrelated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about how great she is. Yeah, I'm really curious because I've actually never read her, her stuff, but it really makes me want to actually, like, you know, finally go into it like because it's one of the classics of the 80s or when did she get the 90s when did she 90s. get the 90s? Yeah. 90s okay yeah. well yeah my new york diary is like one of the best yeah, yeah 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 i got that somewhere i thought i had it right over here yeah i dive into classics like way late like uh jeffrey brown i read yeah. that like five years ago all the jeffrey brown book it's like how can i have not read all this stuff <sighs> she's awesome yeah. They, they have the. Uh, I just bought the. Somewhere on sale, my buddy picked me up the Dirty Plot box set. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's nice. yeah. How much was that? It was on some sale. I forgot what website my buddy got, but I got it for 60 bucks. Oh, what the? Fuck? So, nice. Some internet sale that probably didn't support enough people sorry yeah but, but you're was, the benefit of that i yeah. buy a lot i buy a lot of books so uh yeah, sometimes you gotta take a deal that book so if you have that you are then you basically have every other book that she's done because i think they even included the, the Dan paul affair in there oh did they you know i honestly i i just got it recently i haven't even like dug in yet i have like I have so this is like a stack of like to read and then I like even this stuff I have a bunch of this stuff I still haven't even like touched I have a lot of books. I don't think read. they have her like collage stuff in there, but I mean, or oh, like yeah. her her like dream stuff that I I don't know I'm like not super hot on, but I think it's like comprehensive in that it's like all of her really really zine shit and like um yeah. It makes me want to draw looking at her work. That's why I like it so much. It's so fucking good. That's like always the the comics that I keep are the ones that like I get really amped on drawing after I look at them. Yeah. You know what I have on my table now? Uh, this thing. Oh yeah, that's amazing. So beautiful. Um, you have a, uh, a, I got the. This is the French one, and I actually had to wait a bunch of uh, time till I it came out in English. So I I you know took it out from the SVA library. Um, but his stuff's so amazing. And I just ordered his, he had a book come out last year, I guess. Um, yeah. So I ordered it and it's just, uh, there's something about, I'm trying to work on a sci-fi comic and there's just something about like all the minimal, like kind of like old architecture and then futuristic cars and stuff. It's just like, so, um, and like the outfit, I mean, it's like Italian. So everything's like really fashionable and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Really Wait, nice. that is out. That is out in English, though. It is. Yeah, it is. It's just I I got it like when it came out in France, oh, okay. and then it just I was able to read it in English. Uh, I guess from the SVA library, 
uh, a few months ago. And, yeah, he's uh, incredible. That guy, like, uh, all of his books are slightly different too. Like his art style is a little different. He does like something. He has like a new technique. Like in that one, I think it's like a lot of. Uh, it looks like pencil smudges or. Uh, I don't know. Paper. Yeah, it's ink and ink and um, ink and uh, and like um, pencil, either pencil smudges or like some um, something. I don't know. And so yeah. I don't. It's not digital. It's definitely not digital. No, yeah, an Italian master. Anyone else get any cool books recently? Uh, yeah. Uh, here's what I got. Do you have this Space Hawk? I, uh, you know, I actually don't have that one. I love Basil Wolverton, though. That's right. That's a Basil Wolverton, like his sci-fi yeah. stuff. Yeah. This All is I know is his cartoons. I know his like, you know, crazy cartoons. Uh, this is the good stuff. And this book came out from Fantagraphics in like 2012 or something. And uh, it's just like all his, uh, it's like really tall. I got one of his other ones recently. His like gag comic ones that they put out last year. What was that? that? One was, it's like has like the yellow cover, but it's more of his like kind of comedy strips. But the, it was really good. I just, I'm a real, I'm a big sucker for his cartooning. I think it's amazing. Scoop Scuttle or something like that? Yeah, Scoop Scuttle. That's the one. But yeah, I gotta check that out. I haven't uh, I haven't looked at that. But uh yeah, I'm a big I'm a big fan. Like I did a space hawk story of my own for an issue of now. I just love it. And so uh I got this book even though it was like really fucking expensive. because <laughs> uh, I was just like, man, maybe I'll do like a whole what if I did like a whole space hawk graphic novel? Like would I get in trouble for that? I don't know. <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah. You should just do something that's exactly the same as it and make call it something else. Space bird. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that'd be sick. Yeah. I don't know. I want to do something different. <laughs> yeah. Any other cool books? I got I the new now, it. but I haven't read it yet. So I was seeing it was a really good one. Yeah, cool. I, I haven't got that yet. Nice so. to look at. I don't know. That's, you know. Do you guys know the the person who did the cover, Daria Tesla? Have you guys read her comic, uh, The um, Cagelessness? No. It's the cowboy and the zebra? Dude, it is so crazy. I don't have it right now next to me. But, uh, <laughs> it's so fucking good. I could probably get it, honestly. But that's a room walk away. How about this? You guys get this? Oh yeah, I got someone's. They sent that to me. It, I thought it was actually pretty good. I I it's really great. enjoyed it. Yeah. There, is it all handwritten? Did it look yeah. like that to you? Because I was uh -huh. like, that's crazy. <laughs> if I handwrite an entire issue of Bubbles, I would put it out maybe like once every two years. Oh fucking hell! Did uh, Dan? Didn't Dan Stafford do a zine that was all handwritten? Yeah, he does um, a zine every once in a while of. Uh, like handwritten interviews because he'll just mail interviews to oh, and then see if they that. respond. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, you, oh yeah. Um, that would be a cool issue of bubbles. If you've got like a bunch of artists who have like unique lettering to do like little sections. It yeah. might be terrible. I don't know, but <laughs> I hate asking good. favors from anyone. And so, yeah, that would be like, I hate asking any favors, so. Yeah, actually, but, I think but in I theory, probably, yes. Like, I did um, I did like a French translation of my comic recently, and I didn't know any better. So, uh, Zine Panique had me hand letter the whole thing. So I have this big eleven by seventeen piece of paper, with a whole comic just lettered on. It was, it was like, you can see why that's like a punishment for children in the eighteen hundreds is to write lines because it was grueling. It's so yeah. bad, and then you gotta get it correct corrected. Yeah. I, did this, I did the same shit. I was gonna do something to that. Are you talking about the cowboy Hank zine? Uh, no, no, no. But but you, but yeah, you were gonna do something for it. Yeah. Oh damn! What happened? I was just too busy. I, I haven't. Yeah. Had to. That turned out really cool. That was like one of the coolest things. We. I have it somewhere right here. Yeah. No. Did you get a copy of it? No, I didn't. It's so it has like a shiny hair. It's like uh, 
And her is this uh, is this uh, French or who who released that? It's in French. Uh, yeah, Zine Panique did it. It's really like it's really beautiful. It has like Banu is in it. Oh, yeah. I love that. Um, that's, man. that's like <laughs> that's like when you you know you get sometimes you'll get offers to do stuff and you're like oh that's great and and but sometimes you're too busy and then you just hope you never see it again you never hear about it <laughs> I turn that down and like i see it all over now on the internet it bums me out well, that's what happened to me i turned this down because i was just like i was too busy trying to finish the last issue mm -hmm. and uh, i regret it so much because it's so nice it's just yeah. like I did the same with Rust Belt. I was too busy, and I regret that one as well because that turned out really nice. Is that still I got going? one of his, his. I got one of his more recent uh, books. Uh, a few, I think, the last time I was in Angoulême, and it was like really artsy, and like I was like, "Where's all the poop gags? Where's all the?" Oh, yeah. you know, just like it was like getting really like uh, avant-garde and too. I mean, his stuff is always avant-garde, but it's also like kind of combined with these like really. You know, like, are you, are you talking about his paintings and, are really good. Oh, yeah, are you yeah about his paintings new, are like great. Cowboy Hank, yeah, one of the new newer good. ones. Yeah, it had just like pictures of paintings of like fruit and stuff. And I, I think it was wrapped, so I didn't wasn't able to like see inside. And then I, I bought it, and you know, the French books are like 40 euros or something. And then I opened it, it was like, <laughs> but I love, I love their, their stuff or his, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's the dude at Zine Panic? Yeah. I someone needs to like make it happen for me with him because <laughs> I feel very conspiratorial because that's just just seems like a dude squad and I'm like no, I guarantee if you ask him he'd say yeah I think yeah. he just like he can't get some of these people that's like you know he thinks he can't get them. Um, one in. <laughs> Do you have a font MS? Do you have a font of your lettering? Not that you would use it for. Your no, I stuff. don't. But like just in case. I'm too dumb. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I don't even know how to make a PDF. So. <laughs> this is the last thing I got in the mail. A collection of Roy Rogers comics from Dark Horse. Oh. Dark Horse, yeah. yeah. I like those collections. Dude, this is good. <laughs> it's a really good cover too. Yeah. Is it good? It is. Yeah, it's just like uh, classic uh, cowboy comics, you know. So it's they're all like really entertaining, like really simple. When I, I was have this. Sick, I just read uh, that Omnibus of Tarzan comics that Jesse Marsh, you know, it was like a Dark Horse collection. Yeah, yeah. Perfect for when you're sick because it's just really simple. Mm. Even the artwork is simple and stuff, you know, and I couldn't like actually read a book because my brain just was really foggy, but I could read uh, Tarzan comics and they were great. So uh, I wound up buying this on eBay like right afterwards because I was like, I want more stuff like that, you know. Did you lose your taste, Noah? I didn't, but my wife did, yeah. She oh, didn't. my God. Yeah. Well, clearly I lost my taste, right? I got the Roy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was goddamn good. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, that, that, that zine isn't a Cowboy Hank, though, Corin. It's like a... Uh, like a fan zine for about him. Like so the Yeah, yeah, yeah I figured that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. has the blessing. It's like like yeah, I would have loved I would have loved to do that. There was a few years ago, uh, I think Joe Matt posted about uh doing it something for uh Robert Crumb uh anthology that was like all tributes. And I was like, I gotta get on that. And I wrote, I guess the person who was organizing it and they were like, sure, yeah, make something. And I drew it and it was just like, there was like a few great cartoonists in there, like Joe Matt and Charles Burns and everything else was just like, it's like really low level. Like they just found, it's German. And I feel like they just found like, you know, like the drunk, yeah, yeah like the, dr the, the, the drunken, the drunken painter at the corner bar. And they're like, you want to do a Robert Crumb tribute? And he's yeah. like, uh, sure. I don't yeah, know. It's risky. You never know what you're going to get yourself into. Yeah. <laughs> Well, where is that? Did that zine ever happen? Is it just like. Yeah, it yeah. came out. They sent it to me, and I was just like, oh, man, that could have been so much better. Was this. this uh, wasn't what, do think, my what, chef, was what do you think is the worst? Is like being the best person in an anthology or the worst person? No, I, I, I just think that it just was such a great opportunity. Like, you could have gone. That's like, a good question. A stellar. I don't think That's it matters. I think it sucks anyway. Like, I don't think it matters. <laughs> Yeah. I read uh, I read this. This is was the last thing I took out the library oh, yeah. before I stopped. Did you read that, Noah? 
I never read it, but I've seen it around. It's really cute. It's really, I mean, I don't know if cute is the right word, but it's like really well done. Like she's a big star in France. Um, yeah. And it's something about like how fast, like she draws really fast, but her facial expressions are like really great. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just reads really well. It's funny. It's kind of like a rom-com. Like she has like a really good sense of, uh, uh, yeah, she really caught her, I think. It's really cool. Fun yeah. reading that. And then I ended up reading, I, I ended up reading another Baju book uh, where it's like, it's a real like kind of rom-com where it's about this failed writer. I don't know if you read that one. That was like her first uh, book that was re released in. Uh, that was yeah. really fun. Kind of like a Woody Allen yeah. almost thing, but like, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was good. It was something. Did you guys read Mineshaft? Yep. No. I didn't get so, the new one. Yet. I got, I didn't get that new one either. North yeah, Carolina. Is, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is good. And you should also submit to Mineshaft. Is that uh, by Christoph Mueller or is, is he just always in it? He's just always in it. He's kind of like the the main guy there. Like he did the border. And stuff like that. I really love his drawing. He's so good. Yeah, he's incredible. He has a really good story in here about walking around with Art Spiegelman in Paris. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have yeah. to buy it. I like to buy it. They're cheap too, and they don't charge you a lot for shipping from France. From no, France? the guy oh, lives in North Carolina. Lives in North Carolina. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no wonder it was so goddamn cheap. <laughs> I Medium really thought man. it was from France. Yeah, I've seen that in the Cole anthology. I think it wasn't Simon in one of those. I think so. Which one of what? Nicole. There's like a French anthology called Nicole. Oh. It's like um, I think it's pretty hip over there. And uh, and um, I thought Simon Hanselman was in one of them. There's like two or two or three volumes maybe or something. I don't know. No, no you've I'll been uh... to say no. Oh, sorry. What? No, it's cool. You should say what? Oh, I was just say, how often you gotta say no to um to anthologies because of your because of your work schedule? Like, well, I have a baby, so I can't. Well, that oh fuck. I wasn't right. like really doing like any like when that when they asked me, it was like the my son was like just a couple of months old, and I wasn't really able to draw that much. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Wow. And even now, I mean that. Yeah, it's like uh, I get like four hours a day. We, we like hired a neighborhood girl to come over and hang out with our son. And then I'm, I'm like just in this room drawing for four hours, trying to get as much as I can get done in that time period. And it's like that's why I don't do too much on the YouTube channel anymore, because I'm like, if I have this amount of time, I want to spend it like creating something new and, you know, something that will maybe bring bring money. In yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you do multiple projects at a time, though, Noah. I can only do like one thing at once. Same, yeah. I can't, I can't figure out how to to juggle two comics at the same time. You don't get bored with just doing one story at one time. Well, thankfully, my long ass books like change shape a little bit here and there. So, like right now, I'm doing something really different than my usual shit. Um, so it like gives us a little bit of a break, but like I'm I don't know I think I'm still just like afraid I'm gonna like fall off the wagon or something I don't know fall off the wagon. I'm just like yeah I'm doing two else. comics right now for the first time and it's I don't know I just I just end up just like completely on one of them and the other one just probably well, I'll start the sec the other one when I finish the, other, the uh, one I'm on right now so yeah you're serializing a graphic novel though right in Goiter? I, I don't know if somebody wants to put it in a book i would be mean, nice but yeah maybe i don't know maybe not what's the other project you're doing uh i have a split zine with ha simon hanselman it's like 20 pages each that'll be like in a probably be another couple weeks that'll be done and then i have a there's like this character in the uh the newest issue this guy tedward i'm doing like a little 30 page story with him it'll just be like a zine i love the tedward it's colored so well too yeah you it's, great fucking, it's so goddamn funny too well that's like a little uh, a little joke for myself 
Like I, I get like people keep complimenting the colors on that one comic, and it's like because oh, yeah, yeah. there's a little joke to myself that I did for that is like I found this guy on Instagram who was just like um just completely copying other people's styles. He was like he would draw like exactly like Brunetti for one comic, then exactly like Chris Ware. It was like really you know like a little bit embarrassing. So I just stole his color for one of my comics with the eyedropper tool. I just found this guy who does only Muppets commissions. He does these like beautiful watercolor drawings of Muppets uh, in any kind of request that you want. And I just started following and I thought, well, this is really, cause they're just like really professional, but that's the only thing he does. Just, like, is it Roger Language? Uh, is it what? I don't know. There's like a Muppet cartoon. I saw one of this guy, Roger Language. No, no. Disney's got to get on that, dude. Man, I love the Muppets. I went and saw the Muppets movie in the movie theater when I was in LA. Jason Siegel? No, no. That's called the, the Muppets. The yeah. Muppets, but you're talking about the one where they go to Hollywood in the The Muppet movie from 1978. Yeah. I yeah, love it. Oh. With the frog legs. Oh and yeah. The, the western scene at the end is so good. Yeah, it's so funny. It really yeah. is fucking funny. When they're at the car place and they leave the fucking guy. Oh, you're doing them all in a sketchbook? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just in a sketchbook. So uh, oh. I just posted on Instagram. I just try to do like a page every weekday. Uh, Noah, can I ask you something? I see yeah. with the sketchbook, you got the brown paper on there. Did you do yeah. that from the Cuz of Cuz on the Crumb movie? He did it too? Uh, probably. With I've been the... doing it for a long time. <laughs> so yeah. I, that's I, where I, I got it from. But uh, you know what I actually did for – I. I know. I noticed that Crumb was using um, composition notebooks for sketchbooks. Yeah, yeah. And I started doing that uh, when I was uh, younger. And so I have like a giant box full of just composition notebooks full of cartoons and stuff. You know, all those composition books that he has, their the lines are always so fucking thin, and like they don't make them like that anymore. Like yeah. all the the blue lines are so dark now. Yeah, that's right. Because you can't photocopy something out of a composition notebook without cleaning it up. On the internet, you know. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. But all yeah. those, like, you know, the sketchbooks that they publish of his work, you don't see any of that. So maybe no, and I, I wish they did. I wish you could see that shit with the white yeah. out too. They might fade. That's why that movie is so perfect because it's just like uh, there's so many scenes of showing the sketchbook, like just how he, like just showing like a friend, you know. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Just, uh, yeah. And Linda, Linda Berry uses composition notebooks too, I think, and like yellow legal pads and stuff because it uh, takes away the pressure of. Yeah, yeah. But doesn't it, Emil Ferris, didn't she do her whole book on composition? I don't think she did. I think that was uh, put together like that by uh, the designer at Fanographics. Okay, so they just added it for like effect. It just like goes with the biro, right? What's that? You probably just like it goes like a composition notebook just goes with a biro like two things go together yeah well yeah. I, did, didn't she say on didn't you interview her Noah, and she was saying how she tried to do the lines and then she tried to edit that shit like like the lettering and like yeah. it was all fucked or something yeah that's right yeah. yeah and it's funny people are still waiting for that second book but i don't think that's I don't think that's gonna come. <laughs> somebody like twenty years. Somebody just commented on it. You know, I get like a, when somebody comments on one of my YouTube videos, I get like an email, and I got like an email from like a new comment on email first, and people were like, "No questions about the sequel? Like, what's going on?" Here? <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, man. How yeah, do you so you really it? get an email? Yeah, every it's time. like. But if you have, if you put out something that's like that popular, that there's there's probably so much pressure. Because you already yeah. said there's gonna be another another volume, so it must be so much pressure to like do that to do that comic. You know? That book was everywhere too. It was mm -hmm. such a big book, and it's no, still at Barnes and Noble. No, what yeah. was the most pressure you've ever had for a book that? No, I don't. Nobody wants to see my. I don't have any pressure. Like, I... <laughs> uh, no pressure even on yourself. You mean like while I'm making well, it? Well, I guess Blammo, we already talked about that. Oh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, that's different than, you know, like uh, like uh, Newsweek is going to write an article about this graphic novel as soon as it's done. I they don't know it. anything about comics anyway, so. Yeah. yeah that's right. I don't have any, like, I, I've never had a, a popular 
book. Like I've never done anything that was like really, uh, I've never done like a best selling. It's, it's kind of a good, I think that a lot of times that's a good thing to not have like a bestseller early on. Cause I think it's screwed up a lot of people. Like that yeah. is that guy I listened to an interview with, um, I forget his name, Jay McMurray or Jay, the guy who wrote bright light, big city. And he was like 20 something. And he wrote that. It was like a huge bestseller. And he huh. sounds like completely messed up by it. And he's never written anything that was like nearly, nearly as successful. And I think that like that's that could be like a blessing and a curse. And I don't know. Yeah, but at the at the same time, at least he has that one. A lot of there's yeah, that's of true. There's a lot, and, there's and, millions of people who don't even have that. So oh, you know, for so sure. And and you that's have what I like, think about uh, any anyone who just has one good movie. It's like, well, they got one good movie. Oh, like, for sure, for sure. Like you have like Art Spiegelman did Mouse, and it's like on the forty fifth printing, and you know, like you don't really need to work anymore, and that's kind of you know, it's kind of like uh, really nice to have made this like amazing classic or either classic or either like artistically or bestseller. And those, that one is both. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Having like a perennial bestseller would be like amazing. It's just like this thing that's always out there working for you. And you can just, just like kind yeah. of do what you want. And then like just like a new check will come in the mail. You're like, all right, like another four in sale or something, you know, <laughs> like that. Wow. But they're know. pretty slim in comics dude i mean we could you could yeah. list the ones on yeah on your, on, your hand, on your hands and toes you probably could list them all i remember talking to dash shaw one time about that like because from my perspective when bottomless belly button came out i was like holy shit like this guy is making so much money like this is like, he's the most famous cartoonist or something and then it's like i talked to him about it. he's like no it's like the you know what the print runs are in graphic novels it's like you know, you, you sold like 3,000 copies or whatever, and it's like the biggest thing in comics. Yeah. I think when yeah. you want to do those big sales, it's like the school, it needs to get into the school curriculum. And then oh, yeah. it's like, you know, because now they're like Persepolis and Mouse and all that stuff. And that's, but I don't think they have like Dash's book on, on the school curriculum. So same with Bone. Yeah. Yeah. Bone. Like Bone is child friendly. Yeah. It's like, the universities, some of the universities buy issues of bubbles, but they just buy one of each, and then all fifty thousand kids just share that one issue. Oh, okay. And yeah, Brian, no. you know they got that shit where it's the binder and it's the plastic on top. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know they got that shit. Oh man, I love they that. They should be telling all the kids that they all have to buy their own. Everyone at SAIC has to buy their own, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm happy. I'm happy that they're there. Do you know if it's uh, if they just have the issue on like just the paper, or do they put them in the plastic binder? I have no idea. They probably put it in the oh. trash can. I don't know. <laughs> the trash can. Come on now. Yeah, I, I always like order. You know, like this for example is like the Space Hawk book is like a, it's like former library copy. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's like the cheapest copy I could find because if you just want to get like a a nice version of this book, it's like seventy dollars. So. Yeah, I did that for, uh, I've done that plenty of times, but one that was like the most expensive was the IDW Family Circus Volume 2, which is like an incredibly rare collection. Mm. That Volume 1, they printed a bunch, but Volume 2, I really think they printed like none, and it didn't sell. So it's like... You sit down and read a whole volume of Family Circus comics? I just flip through it. I own a ton of Family Circus comics. Really? Yeah. Here, I'll show you my collection. <laughs> yes. I'm on a laptop so I can... Let's see. Show the clock, too. Cartoonist Chris. Right. I'm sorry I'm trying to make this like... Uh... How do I do it? Sorry, I, my like death perception's all messed up. There it is. Those are all the paperbacks. Are all Family Circus? Yeah, that's like a lot of my Family wow. Circus. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. It's probably twenty up there or something like that. Ron, do you have a VHS player? Yeah, I have a VHS player. I actually oh, have a, two. I even have one right here that I just got. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You guys show the clock. Tour? Yeah, show the clock. Oh yeah, I put one of my bumper stickers on this clock. So fucking good. <laughs> you know who gave me this clock was uh, like that um, 
that cheap value printing that people use for Xerox printing. They like fucked my order up. I only use them one time and they fucked it up. Best value copy. And they and they sent me this clock for free to say sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? It, the, the logo that's what used to be under here was like cheap. It said like best value copy or whatever. But yeah. I put the I put the bubbles logo on it. I I think it's cool. I'm obsessed so with sick. clocks. I wear a watch. I'm always like uh, I'm pretty obsessed with like uh, what time it is. It's because you have a lot of stuff to get done, right? You yeah, I deadline. got a lot of stuff. I have, dead, <laughs> I have deadlines. I give myself deadlines. I give myself pretty hardcore deadlines, honestly. Like I'm, th- I think like the whole year in advance when it comes to Damn. things. Wow. Brian has twenty other zines he's working on too that no one asks about, but you have to ask. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't post. I don't talk about. I have other zines too. I, Bubbles isn't even my only zine. I do yeah. other zines too. It's so awesome. Is Bubbles oh. your most popular zine? Oh yeah, what if I had a secret one that was even more popular that like <laughs> I was like, oh I also do this. I, no, no, no. The other do you, ev- do. do you mail what? everything yourself? Do you mail everything yourself? Or do you have someone helping I, you with like I even no? I even staple every zine myself. Every single oh, one. Yeah, so, that's crazy. I, I did a Kickstarter one time and then I had to send like, I don't know, a hundred or something booklets, and I was like, I'm never doing this again. You know, I can't deal with the post office. If you want to talk shipping, you can call me. I already talked about okay. it with Josh. Uh, I can talk about shipping all day. And I think it – I yeah. personally uh, find learning about shipping, it's like, uh, you know, you're just trying your best to try and get people, you know, people who want your things. And it's your – like, you try so hard to get them the best price so that you – like, because it's like neither one of you are winning from the shipping. It's like – you, but you try. I so I try really hard to get the cheapest shipping, and I've tried all kinds of different ways. Um, yeah. Like internationally is mostly like where I'm at. Yeah, that's like, tricky. Is, is, is it's the most. Fr- mo- yeah, it's the most frustration. I just sent a print. I have like a print shop, and I uh, they raise all the prices for everything. And it was like for Oslo, someone in Oslo, and I was like, okay, you know, I charge them like sixteen dollars, and then they I go to the post office, and they're like thirty two dollars for a tube, yeah. you know, with paper in it, and I'm just like. <laughs> I don't go to the post office. I I ship online. I do everything. Do they pick okay. it up too? Drop off? Up? No, no. I drop it off because oh, I I yeah. would feel because my postman here, here, actually, he, he walks the street, so I'm not gonna give it I to him see. to like, walk with. Him. Right. Where Where are you in the U.S.? Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. That explains. Literally everywhere in the U.S. there are decent post offices, but I'm in like Queens and in Brooklyn and Queens you have like the like really really rough post offices where people are just like real you know they they don't even have they have those windows where you could just put your packages and a lot of times they're like no that that thing's not you know we locked it up and the drop-off boxes are all locked up and um they're real like crazy or you walk into a post office and someone sometimes there's no one there there's just like a, a line of people waiting. I've, that's happened to me a few times. A line of people waiting. Oh, for sure. sure. No it's one. Sad. No one at the post office. I'm like, okay. You got to go at the in the AM when they first open the doors. Right. That's then, a good, yeah. You can go with like 80 packages and they're happy to see you. That's man. a good tip. That is very good. Yeah, I should do that. Brian, are you friends with your post office peeps? You know, I used to be friends with this guy. His name was Jay Marrow. And I yeah, think yeah. he was, re- I think he retired though. There used, to, I used to be friends with, yeah, quite a few. Of them. I mean, I go to the post office at least once a week. Same. Um, and I try so, to be really but, nice to them. Cause I always like imagine myself in their place and I'm oh, like, me too, me meet, too. you must meet like so many a-holes a day. Like, oh, that blow up. And I, so- sometimes I just hear next to me, people talking to them. Like I, I have to I be nice to this person. Like a couple weeks ago. And there was just these these guys like had come in like to like and were just filming the guy behind the counter, and I, so I asked him I was like why are these people filming and and he's like uh, yeah they just come in they film until we get annoyed and they hope that we like start a fight and they can sue us and they put it oh, on no it's just like <laughs> horrible yeah there's these awful people yeah that's pretty shitty. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. It's pretty funny too, though. No, I no. Thought, did you read uh, the Bukowski book, the uh, Post Office? Yeah, you did. Is it good? I haven't read that one. 
I can't remember. I read all of Bukowski's books like in my mid twenties. Uh, yeah. and they were all good except for Hollywood and Pulp. Those are the two bad ones. Okay. I haven't read those. But there, yeah, that's like, a very it's like it's, reading a response book, you know. It's like it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. Have you ever I, I met one time I, I remember uh meeting up these two people and one of them was like a poet, like he literally like introduced himself as a poet, which is it's cool, nice. but I, at yeah, the time I was in my twenties and I was reading Bukowski and I was like, Oh, what do you think about Bukowski? And he was just like this just really set him off. Like apparently like po real poets like don't don't dig him at all. I don't know. Yeah. Well I don't MS. know. You know. Can I see your originals? I'm like working on newsprint right now. Um on newsprint? Yeah, well, yeah, let's find like out why. First layer here. Well, I have. I don't know how well you can see this. This is like the stuff I'm blue lining out right now. Oh, I'm fuck. like going back to doing a crazy amount of layers because I'm doing like the spicing. Oh, that so looks it's not awesome. inked yet. I'm having this issue yeah. I'm running into where I'm a lady drawing dudes fighting. So, like, everyone is like, oh, look how hot they are. They're, they're fucking each other. And I'm like, I don't want it to look like that. <laughs> You know, What's like the... when guys draw boobs and you're like, I'm not sold. It's the same thing of like when a woman draws a fight scene. It just looks like fucking. So yeah, I gotta, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I'm for sure. Get less sexy through the layers here because it's just like it's too much. Well, what are you, probably... what are you, what are you looking at to try and uh, make it less sexy? Like, are you, are you trying to like, are you looking at a move? Like, yeah, what's your goal? Well, I'm working from like MMA fights because it's an MMA fight, um, oh, okay. which is already like horny, but like I have yeah. to like, it is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, you yeah. know, like how any combat thing is. Um, but I'm trying not to make it too porny so i'm gonna i mean i'm like as i'm going through the layers i like have like this reference of like basically just punisher comics <laughs> that like my friends have been like just read this it'll be fine um have you ever so. been to an mma fight yeah what's it like <laughs> it's a lot oh. of like um it's like the people oh, that go to like pro wrestling shows, but they really are like, I want to see people die tonight. Like oh, in the wow. way where it's like, it's it's like you're saluting the flag and you know, men are men and women are women. And you're like, ugh. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, I have all these like crazy weird photocopies of like comics my friends have lent me to just make sure I do this right. So, um, so as I'm going through the with the layers, it's getting a little bit less like sexy i guess hmm. or I, meaty. Can't, I can't wait to see it yeah that's interesting it's i can't wait for, i can't wait for your book i'm excited thank you so, it's gonna come out next fall so is that fanographics 2023 yeah, nice. yeah. So, 2023 yeah um, it should be done by the end of the year but you know it'll be like yeah, yeah. Lag time. Oh, um, i can't wait thank you I'm like less than 100 pages now, but all the pages I have to do are like really time consuming and weird. So, what's how a small? You, oh, sorry. I, I how did you sell that book to Fantagraphics if you're not even uh, close to being done with it? I just kind of told Eric that I wanted to do it and kind of let me. It, so, cool. She yeah. has a good repertoire. You can look at her last books and just know. I sent him a copy of Desperate Pleasures and wrote, put me in coach. And he's like, what, what do you want from me? So, like, that's awesome yeah so when he was all like i would have talked to you anyway you don't have to send it and i'm like whatever this is guaranteed now so he didn't even write please on the note <laughs> i'm sure i did i'm sure it was all fine nate <laughs> don't worry <about> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah 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 i love desperate pleasures that book was yeah. awesome yeah, yeah I've, never, I've never pitched something to fanographics that wasn't that wasn't done with already usually i'm just like uh, here's I tell Eric like here's what I am working on. Uh, he like doubled my advance on accident. That's a good accident. That's... Well, no, he sent he sent me the entirety of it before I had it done, and yeah. I was like, oh. "Is this a mistake?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah, but you're good for it, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, it'll be fine." He's like, "Okay, cool. I won't worry about <laughs> trying to avoid a check or whatever. We'll never get a royalty check. It's fine." Was it? Yeah, PayPal? I kind of figured. Um. Yeah. No. It was Venmo. No. It was the fucking check in the mail. Uh, okay. <laughs> Venmo. 
I was very curious. It was yeah, he kept app. saying he was Eric Reynolds, and he kept trying to cash at me. <laughs> no. It was Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just he just sent you a box of books that they've published before. So right. Here's the advance. Here's yeah. uh, some Carl Barks. Some, here's some peanuts. Yeah, I, I, just, I would accept that. I would too. In fact, I I do uh, mostly just write to Eric and say these are the books that I want. No, do they give you them? They just give you them for free. Yeah, it's like it's technically they take it out of your royalties, but they never have. They just that's so cool. <laughs> I get. I love to get the Disney Masterwork books. I feel yeah, like they're, they're amazing. Don't you yeah. have most of them already? Me? Yeah. I have a lot, but they come out like three times a year. They come oh. out a lot. I forget that they make more Disney movies. <laughs> the Disney shit doesn't stop. It's yeah. awesome. Is it is it like uh, sketches per movie or what is the Disney masterwork that? Uh, back yes, to my back dude, to my yes. show. Oh yeah, I love this. It's my favorite part. <laughs> right here, Disney. Right here, complete Carl Barks. Let's go. Yep. Wow. Amazing. That's the real heads. <laughs> but but the, the, the Disney works were uh, they're like this. They were just. Ah, they're, I see. They're, you're getting different artists and. And so, like, you're getting like, I don't know how to say his name, but Don Jeeps or her. He he's he's a pretty famous he's a pretty famous duck artist. That's not Don Rosa or Carl Barks. And so, it's a great introduction if you're like, just kind of like, okay, what else is out there besides Barks and Rosa? Okay, so it's not re it's not related to the um to the movies really. It's just like uh, the Disney no no comics. no. It's not related to them. Yeah yeah. The Disney comics are like as big as like marvel or dc there's literally oh, wow. there's literally thousands and thousands of them and they they have a huge following but mostly in europe but okay. that's where that's a lot nice. of these a, a, a lot of these artists are like italian yeah and so fanographics translates them and idw used to they used to put these books out they would put books out like this mm -hmm. and they and these would be collections and it's again similar artists i'm pretty big no, on the uh, i'm pretty big no. on the ducks no, no. What was your question? Go no. <laughs> no, I got. I actually have two questions now. So, is this gonna be in uh, the as a cartoonist? No. Collection? Oh no. No. Oh shit. Okay. Well, why? Uh, why? <laughs> well, as a cartoonist is like the you know I I had this whole thing where I was like I publish a story that was like a mustache Noah story. Yeah. Um, and and they all kind of connected with each other, but I wanted to keep that a secret so that way I could actually sell, you know, like if I wanted now to publish uh, one of the sto short stories, um, they wouldn't publish it. They knew that it was part of a larger story. So I tried to make it work on its own, yes. but I knew that they were all going to work together as a book, just this one particular thread. And then, um, so, so the, what's in as a cartoonist is um, like a couple stories from Blamo, some stuff from now, a lot of like um, uh, unpublished comics. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so but it's all like one storyline basically, you know. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know. I thought it was more of just like a collect like all like all over the place collection of just auto bio stuff. Yeah. But also there's a red there is a red line on the spine. Is this is that but there's not it's gone on on the website on Fantagraphics website. So is oh. the red is the red line like uh <laughs> Is it going to well, stay? Because you should keep the red line, I thought. It's just like, the, I think what happened was you're, they had like an image that's just like a mock-up of, of the book. Yeah. Like the little book, and then they you know they tweak it before it actually goes to the pictures. It's just a slightly different design. Oh, so that was their choice. <laughs> I'm making popcorn. No, no I'm, I'm reheating food. Sorry, guys. I literally was about to eat when I got home, and then I started doing this, and now I have like rice ready. Sorry, I'm like. <laughs> you gotta mute your mic when you eat, like I did. My boyfriend oh, sorry, made me guys. chicken masala. Sorry, it was I, I, fucking I'm, amazing. I don't know what I'm doing. So the, the reason <laughs> this uh, this video is called two graphic novels in one day because uh, they because of like the weird shipping, all like the paper supply problems and all that stuff. Now, as a cartoonist, is coming out the same day as the Joseph Smith graphic novel, uh, oh, which, is, which is not good. <clears throat> when is that like, coming out? Uh, when? Yeah. On the, uh, July 26th. So, uh, okay. 
Yeah, so it's kind of a disaster to have two books come out at the same time. That I can't. sucks, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like I can't. And the Joseph Smith one's probably going to get the the press attention, so I don't know what to do. It's like I feel like a as a cartoonist is just going to be like in that shadow, you know. Well, all the press you do just hold up both books. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, you could always. Yeah, you could always also drop. They always ask you, "Well, what else are you working on?" And then you're like, "Oh, as a matter of fact, I just have." So you ride. You know, you hope that people would just buy both. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just get bummed out because I wanted. I'm I'm excited for both of those books, but they're two completely different things. So I don't know. Right. Yeah. You know, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that just happened like last week. I got that email. I was like, "Shit." Um, and the deadline, you know, well, like the the Joseph Smith book was supposed to come out in March, I think, and then uh, they just well, they at least it's not coming out at like the beginning of COVID. So that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that happened happens. to me. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> yeah, it happened to me too. It was just like, uh, right? Well, you like mess up your sales, or like what what, what happened with that? Did it get fucked well, over by Diamond? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, mine was just, it was like a book publisher and they usually do really good press PR. And then, you know, they like have this whole plan and everything's planned out and then they have it in a bunch of publications. And the bat last book had like, was in like 10 different publications or online, you know, platforms. And that COVID one was just zero, just like had oh, like what was the zero, COVID zero. It was, uh, I didn't write it. It was like about uh, Anonymous, like the hacker group. I just drew it. So I wasn't oh. like super, it wasn't like, uh, uh, I would. it would have hurt a lot more if it was like a pet project. Um, it was kind of more like, a, you know, a job for hire, but it was still a bummer that like, you know, it didn't yeah. get any, uh, and zero, zero press. Cause, and I don't blame, you know, like no one had that, the bandwidth to, to, to think about some, you know, comics or anything. Yeah. And the same happened to you, Noah, right? Like you had like, uh, I think a Fanta Bukowski book. Yeah, the complete, yeah, the complete Fanta Bukowski came out in hardcover at the beginning of the pandemic. And I had, I was like invited uh, to all these shows. It was going to be like a great year. And then uh, mm -hmm. COVID happened. I just got, everything got canceled. And that's actually why Sucks. I started the YouTube channel. Because think about this, like, you know, uh, a lot of people have been watching this stream as we've been doing it. And I was thinking about it. And I'm like, this is better than just going to a show and doing a panel. Because like more people are gonna watch this than would sit in the auditorium or whatever. Yeah, the panels are always like uh, almost all of them for me have been letdowns. Uh, just because it's like they, you, they, I feel like they stuff too many people on a panel now, especially in like Comic Con, San Diego, and those places. It's like you're there with like eight or nine other people, and then they give you like five minutes to talk, and then it's over. Yeah. So, yeah, me and Nate yeah. have like uh, my recent comic and his book muscle horse like were coming out at the same time so we did an instagram live stream and that, that went really well like we both got a ton of sales from it like, that's cool a decent amount of people watching and yeah so did yeah. you do like a, a just a talk or were you like uh drawing or what was it no i just like i uh, it was like this questions about his like weird relationship with horses he uh yeah Ask me some stuff, and then we had like a call in. It was like a radio show type thing where we had people call in and ask questions. Like it was a lot of fun, and you know, like I said, like a decent amount of people watched it, which uh, you know got some sales from it. That's great. People love to take their time when you get, when you get them on the air. They like to tell you their whole life. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. There's a time. There's 30 seconds left. I said you got to finish up. <laughs> oh yeah yeah when, 30 yeah, seconds cool. come on but yeah it worked out well i'm gonna go to uh heroes con next month or in june and uh that's a good show because i can just drive up there in north carolina from here and uh that's like a, that's that'll be like the first comic show i've done i think since the pandemic started Wait, are you like, cabling or yeah, like yeah. Pop culture type thing or... Wait, did what's that is that like a pop culture type show? Or yeah, it? uh, well, it's it's really good for they have like a whole section called like Indie Island or whatever, but it's like a really good show for indie artists. It's it's good for like anybody. I mean, they, it's a really good um, original art uh, show. So like, if you bring some drawings and sell those, a lot of people will buy them there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's why it's really popular with a lot of uh, cartoonists. It's a really good show. 
I so, haven't been, been, but I might come this year. Yeah, you should. But, um, just to hang out. I've all, I've always felt like it, it from the outside, at least, uh, it feels like the most overlap between like indie and mainstream. Like, mm-hmm. like you can go there and just love Marvel, or you can go there and like indie, and you're good. Like both people will have like a good time, which is cool because I, it doesn't feel like there's that much overlap. Uh, but Heroes Con always seemed like a really cool show. Yeah, it is. It's a good one, and there are like a lot of good indie artists that show up there. You know, um, the first time I went there was with uh, Ad House. Mm, was, yeah, he goes every uh, year. Yeah, and there was a lot. It was I was surprised by how fun it was. You know? Yeah, he and and my buddy Jason Hamlin, they they go all the time. I know that they they've been tabling there forever. I think the weekend before though is TCAF. I'm going to be at TCAF. Mm-hmm. I want to. I'm TCAF excited nice. for that. That was one of the I shows was, I was supposed to be a guest at in 2020. It got canceled. I, w- I was supposed to be there in 2020, so mm-hmm. uh, I'm excited to experience it. I've never been to it. Oh wow! Yeah, it's a great. That's a great show. Yeah, I'm it's, excited. They have it in a library, like CXC. Oh well, okay. There's like a, I remember I was there, um, and there's like always like crazy people wandering around. You know, it's a public library, so it's like a show, and then like. Some, Richmond Dial. Zine Fest is, is the same. We do it at the public library. I organize Richmond Zine Fest. And yeah. um, I don't know the future of it, but right now, we, we for the last like three or four years was at the public library. I like it because you get random people who have never even seen a zine before. What about Fluke? Do you guys know that show in Athens? It's like never happening. Done it, but I, I've heard about it. It happened right now yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I, was, yeah, I was looking at photos of it, trying to decide if that's... Cause I could go to that show, so I was like, is that "Are you going to SPX?" No, I don't think so. I think SPX is dead to me. That would Why? Be- Why is it dead to you? <laughs> I'm going. No, I don't. I don't know. I, I would go if if uh, I was invited there, but I don't think I would go and get a table and do that. They would say no. Would I say no? No, they would say no to you. No, no, no. You ask. Oh, oh, oh. If they like invited me as like a guest, if I was like there for fanographics or something, I would go. But I don't think I would go and get a table there. Um, but that's what we used to do. I went like every year until like 2015 or 16, I think, was the last time I went. Are you but, going to uh, – have you got your suit figured out for Caitlin's wedding, Noah? Sure I do, yeah. Absolutely. Hell yeah. We just went shoe shopping today, me and Emmy and Craig and then Toll. <laughs> like, went to Easton, <laughs> just went shopping together. Yeah. Yeah, that's also. I'm heading over to to Ohio for that, but I'm, I'll just be there for like a you know, day and a half or something. I didn't think Nate Powell's coming too. I like didn't occur to me that like this was going to be like a cartoonist event to some extent, but yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and I haven't been back to Ohio. See, when I lived in Columbus, Ohio, it was like besides the really good friend group I had there, it was a really grim time. It was really depressing. Uh, I was like. Felt like I was dying living there. <laughs> Why? What were you eating? The weather? Yeah, the weather was real bad. It's really uh, gray here. I just like lived alone in an apartment, and uh, I don't know. I just felt really depressed. And I, I remember I didn't make any money. I was like trying to be a cartoonist for a living. And I, I remember when I lived in Ohio one year, I made eight thousand dollars in a year. Damn. And I, and I had to live on that shit, and it sucks. And uh, me and Brian Moss, the art, we lived in the same building. We started going to this church where they were giving away food. So <laughs> go there wow. Get all of our groceries from this church. Is it that one on Broad that has like a? No, it was, it was outside of. It was like outside of Columbus. Like oh. Columbus, it was, but we would drive over there and get our food. And then uh, I remember I went to the Salvation Army, and this the lady who was helping me. I had to like sit in a row of uh, like homeless people. It, like to wait my turn to like get the shopping cart and go around and get like uh you know the and yeah and uh i just felt so depressed i was like man why am i doing this in my life like this is not working out for me uh and uh, the woman who was like guiding me through to pick up my food was like my age and she, she was just looking at me like why the fuck are you here because <laughs> you have to like talk about like your income and I, all my income was coming from my patreon Right. So it's like, do you have a Patreon? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's how my money, it's my money. And she's like, uh, uh, do you ever run a podcast or something? 
I was like, no. And then she, I, when I got home, I remember she started following me on Instagram. I was like, oh, oh, oh God. She's like, I'm going to check up on this motherfucker and see if he's actually doing better it's than he real, says. Yeah. Yeah. It was so fucking embarrassing. It's horrible. Yeah, I haven't had to do it. that yet, so it's been okay. But Yeah, I don't know. I stuck with it. I'm still just a cartoonist for a living, but that it was pretty brutal there. I probably should have gotten a job. When was that? What year was that, Noah? That was uh, 2016 or, yeah, 2016. Damn. That's like the kind of year back when you could just post on Instagram just like a picture of you on a plane. It said, just got on the plane. You could get out of the plane, say, just got off the plane. You post a picture of the window. That's what I would do? You're, that's like some, that's like, that's like 2015 type shit to do on Instagram. Yeah. We uh, saw, yeah. This weekend, we saw a guy like taking a picture of his, uh, his coffee and we're like, what is this like 2016 or 2015? Yeah, that's, that's Who old as that? fuck to do. That's so old. That? That's old yeah. style. Well, what they do now, like now you just like take a screenshot of a tweet that you made and then put that on Instagram. No, that's pretty boomer too. Thanks, that's JJ. Boomer. I, I invited Jasper to come on. So he has a link. He's, He's probably drunk. All right. <laughs> I sent the link to a lot of people. I was like, all right, let's just see who shows up. Who else? Who didn't show? Uh, Tom Kaczynski didn't show up. Oh, damn. Simon He's Hansen. doing a... He's so, doing a, a book signing in Philly and at Partners and Son at the end of this month, I think, for his new book. Yeah, that's cool. And it's a Fanographics book, so I wanted to talk yeah, to him yeah. about that. He would, uh, let Fanographics publish his, uh, his book. You know? He has his own publisher. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would love to hear what he said. Like, it doesn't give me a lot of faith in uncivilized books, man. We're going back, we're going to fanographics again. Your going. word's not mine, Noah. <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, do it. <laughs> also, I got to get more copies of One Dirty Tree from him because I, I, I don't know how that's. Uh... It was so nice and convenient living in Minneapolis when he was there because it'd be like, I'm texting you, I'm biking to your HQ right now. <laughs> like, yeah. I love Minneapolis. Yeah, Minneapolis is good. I was, I was, I might do um, what's their show in Minneapolis? So, Hot Topic. Yeah, I might go do that mm. this year. I think the venue will be better and make more sense than it has in the past. Like, it won't be like, why are we in a weird wedding venue selling comics? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be at the university. So, I remember I did a show in Hall at in uh, Philadelphia on Halloween. On Halloween. Whoa! It was uh, the Locust Moon Fest. Oh, I was there. Were you there? Oh. This was in 2015 or 16. I can't remember what year it was. Because that every, story's gone. Every time I go to Philadelphia every Halloween weekend um, mm -hmm. to go to this 24-hour horror movie film festival. Yeah. By this people exhumed cool. film festival. I chilled with Nate last time. I was there early or something. I saw you. That shit rocked. Yeah, we went to the Clark, we went to the dog bowl. Yeah, and then the next day, it's like from Saturday to Sunday. Anyways. It's 24 hours, and that and the, and where you're talking about was within walking distance of the movie theater, and so I like skipped a movie and I went over and like shopped at some comics. Yeah, they had the, it was oh, like oh. in some old building that's like from yeah it, it, time or something. There's no electricity in there. Yeah, so it was, it, and there was no air conditioning. Yeah, it was like getting darker and darker. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, it was, and there was like people on the stage and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a, they had a really good guest list. I remember because they had uh, Dennis Kitchen was there. I think Craig Thompson was there. They had uh, that guy Chris Claire, uh, Chris Claremont. Oh yeah, was it like a one-off event or something? Like that? A what? A one-off event or is it every year? No, they had it like every year. It was there was a comic shop in Philadelphia called Locust Moon. Yeah, okay. it was awesome. Rest in peace. Yeah, it's gone. It's run, It was run by the okay. guy who started Beehive Books, I, Josh O'Neill. Okay. I go to a different film festival in Philly that's just 12 hours long, and it was always the same weekend of free comic book day. And so I used to always skip or like part of a movie during that day, and I would go into the Locust Moon because it was also like within walking distance, and I would pop over, and that's I would always like just run in and get the Fanographics one and like go back to the theater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a good shop, right? totally i got a lot of great stuff there they used to have like a pretty big i mean it was around for a long time so like any indie centric shop that's along for over 10 years it's like they just they always have weird stuff it's great 
Yeah. Noah, would you ever do an entire free comic book day issue for Fantagraphics where it's all is like just you and it's like your best comic ever and it's free as fuck? No, he has a baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, in a different in it well, you've had you've had not a baby for longer than you've had. I a would baby, have. So. I would have done I, you know, I did I was a part of one of their free comic book day comics. Yeah. You did the uh, cover of the one you Pepe's funeral. Pepe yeah. funeral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was it. And then like I think that was a good one. Not that was a really good one. That's it's like perfect. the one of the, that's probably the best fan graphics free comic book day issue. That actually has like fire content. Yeah, yeah dude, yeah. yeah. That that's, that's like the it. one Simon one of the only Simon comics that's uh colored on a computer, other than one of the uh FBI minis, but yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, that was my idea to do that comic too. Because really? uh, yeah, because I found like an old fan of graphics free comic book day comic, which was just the anthology of like the younger artists. And uh, I can't remember what it was called. I think it was just I think it was the same title, like uh, World's Greatest Cartoonist or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Eric Reynolds about it. Like, you know, there's like a whole new crop of like young cartoonists. Like we should just do like a free comic book day thing that's just about that's just like uh, features the newer artists for fan graphics. It's that's why we did it. Um, and then like the next year, I think it was like a, they did like an FK score. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thing or something. He did the last they, one too. They, yeah. they did a couple years where it was like collections. I want to say there was at least two. Yeah. The world's greatest cartoonist, and I think they did. Didn't they do another year like world's greatest cartoonist again or something? I I would have yeah. to dig, but somewhere I had and and Dash had Dash had a comic in one of them. It was a sequel to Bottomless Belly Button or like an epilogue or something. Oh, I didn't see that. I, I just hate when they do like the free comic book day comic and it's just like a, a you know like a promotional thing for totally fuck that you know? yeah no 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 yeah, I don't but like, you know like... i'm trying to remember who talked to me about doing a free comic book day and how oh maybe it was like tom scioli talking about it or something one of those people were talking about how it's just like you know this is a your chance to have like twenty thousand copies like uh -huh. Yeah, you know, because yeah. Chris Pitzer, Chris Pitzer also did one for Ad House once, and I remember him. It's like the most print run of anything, and they're all gone, and it's like they're all out there in the world, which is like amazing, you know. Like, if yeah, you can afford to do it, it is like a great chance to advertise if you can afford it. Yeah, Tom did the Transformers one. I think is the one he was talking about because I, I, they, him and uh, yes, him and yeah, talked about the free comic book day being so worth it. I love yeah. the Transformers, his Transformers comics. But uh, this, you know, when I go to the comic shop on free comic book day, it's like they, I don't want any of that shit. Like most of it, it's just like it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's not great. Yeah, I okay. actually I had a free comic book day that I made, and then it got ruined yeah. when COVID happened. And then I like did it as like a charity donation, but mm. uh, I and I, I should have made another one this year. But that's the it, Jasper cover one, right? The one with the Jasper cover. That was originally going to – I was going to mail out like 100 to all the shops that cared to me and trying to just get more readers in store. Yeah, that's a good um, idea. I know yeah. you do ads for the back cover, Brian, but you should just do – you should just like print it really big on the back of one of them so like people can like take it in since that's like a hard what, to find. back cover? Yeah, just like on the back, just the illustration alone, you know? Yeah, maybe we could do like a poster or something. It's a good, oh, it, you totally. know, Chris, Chris Pitzer actually bought that yeah. art. He owns the original art. It's so good. It's in a good home. Yeah. But yeah. They just closed, right? Ad House they just, uh, or recently. Yeah. They, he's they're still they're like, he's still tabling this year. He told me, so he's still like selling, but he's not, I think he's done with new books. I think that's, but if I know Chris, that guy loves a project. So I know that he really. He's he's gonna make some stuff. He can't help himself. He'll make he'll spend a whole week on a single project that he makes like three copies of, and he'll show me, and I'll be like, dude, that looks like a completely finished book, but you just don't have like the rights to publish it. So he makes like one bootleg, and it's like the coolest thing you've ever seen. I don't know. I just know that he's gonna yeah. do something cool, but who knows? It, it won't it won't be under the, exactly the ad house name, but he'll do something. That guy can't help himself. This reminds me of uh, when I lived in Colorado. I would, you know, we would do like all the local uh, things, like um, you know, there'd be a comic shop doing like free comic book day. Uh, come meet the local artists. So people would be coming in to like get their free comic books, and then like, you know, they have like card tables set up with like all the local artists there, like selling prints and stuff. And man, that fucking sucked. I'd be sitting there, <laughs> and people would be like, uh, 
you know, some kid will come up to you and be like, can you draw Captain America for me? You know, and you're like, I'm not. You're like, yes. <laughs> not as <laughs> Do the bad Santa thing. I'm on my fucking <laughs> break. <laughs> I'm screaming in their face. <laughs> it's like you show up to a shop. Anytime you have like a signing or you're going to be a part of like a local comics event and you show up uh, to the shop and they have like a Ecto-1 parked outside and like some stormtroopers walking around, you're like, dude. And just leave. I'm leaving. Fuck. <laughs> 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 okay, this is going to suck. This is going to be humiliating. And that's like most of the signings in comic shops I've ever done have been like that. Oh, like, yeah. Sitting there staring I, at I was, the wall Harlan Toys. Yeah, I was one time on on like a, um, you know, at West Coast, like the publisher got money from like the Israeli uh, government because I'm originally from Israel. And mm-hmm. they're like, okay, we don't usually send anyone on anything, but here's this money. So like go, you know, to San Francisco and, and uh, I think Seattle and, the only one that had people come was the Fanographic store. But oh, then yeah. I was in this store in San Francisco and it was just like this one one woman came and it's just like you're there with like the store owner and you feel so like ashamed because you're like not brought anyone in. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> the only one that came is like your friend that happens to live in San Francisco. And oh God, it's so, so crushing. Crazy. And you're packing up your stuff and the store owner's like, well, uh, Sorry about that. And you're like, no, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all so yeah, I awkward. told everybody. The, the guy's like, yeah. well, I put the poster in the doorway, you know, people said they're going to And, and the thing is, the thing is, is like, I, I've done a lot of signings in France, and it's like, you go in France to, like, the most, like, unknown, like, some, like, really distant town, and you go to the comic book store, and then, like, 15 or 16 people come, and then they, like, apologize profusely. They say, yeah. we don't know what happened. There's so few people, and other than, and, and I'm like, yeah. I don't get it. Like, like that was a hit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the only signings yeah. that, like Quimby's is a good place to do an event at. Right, like, the places that are like actual indie stores, but like if there's right, like, right, right. If Did you ever go to Big there. Brain Noah in Minneapolis when it existed? Yeah, that was a good job. I, I went. I went there. Isn't it great? Yeah, it was awesome. I always was, get that confused. There's one in um, Detroit called uh, Green Brain, and I did a signing there one time. Weird. It was a that was a, another lousy one. Like it's you, a good shop, but like nobody shows up. I I don't you know nobody ever shows up to that stuff. Have you guys done Vault of Midnight for anything in Michigan? Never heard of it. I think it's a. I think it might be kind of similar where it it has everything there. So they've got like fucking Funko Pops, but then they have like a Zine rack somewhere. Um, <laughs> but uh, I I don't know. I follow them on Instagram, and their Instagram reminds me a lot of like the Partners and Son, where they're just like really involved with their staff, you know. Oh yeah. Putting putting all the stuff out and and advertising. So I want to see if I can't do something up there when I have my next book out. Yeah, Partners and Son is great. It's a good shop. They're so the sweet. Yeah. Uh, so, Nate, I told them we would take care of you when you came to town. I was like, we'll take, care, take care of your baby boy. <laughs> yeah, Gina told me that's so nice. Yeah. As yeah. long as I'm fed. No, you'll be like fine. When you, uh, when, you, when you get a shop to carry your comic and then uh, you're passing through town like uh, two years later and you go into the shop and there's like a <laughs> box. <laughs> like under oh, I had the worst. I like, um, like, <laughs> I put uh, issue one of my comic in uh, Chicago comics, like in 2014. And then I, I, I like, uh, I went back, I think like the, the year I left, which was 2019 and all five copies were still there. Oh, oh God. And they're all and, uh, hated from the sun. <laughs> so I just, uh, but they were in like, I been moved to the, uh, the like bargain zine bin. Oh, and I was like, I was like, okay, I don't even have a copy of this, so I just made, I like made my girlfriend go and buy them all back at full, at like their price, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Humiliating. They wouldn't have known it was you though if you were, went in, right? Or is it the same people? I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. Probably mm-hmm. not. But... There was a shop in Denver when I first started doing Blamo. I, I like, you know, I printed the first issue and I walked around town like hand distributing them to all the shops. And this one shop, it's still there. It's called like Mutiny. And I went in there and I was like, uh, this is my comic book. And they're like, well, take one copy. And they put it in like in a plastic bag and then underneath the glass counter. <laughs> it's just like, nobody's going to buy this, man. <laughs> or maybe guys- it was their, their author special. I don't know. No? <laughs> yeah. 
Have you heard of the Denver Small Press Fest? I know about Dink, but I guess this is something else. No, I haven't. I haven't heard of it. I think it like happened a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know if anyone went, um, but I I just heard such you know mixed things about Dink. So I was like, is there a thing in Colorado that's like a a a huge hit? It's a good name uh, though. Like an indie show, and then like you go there, but it was like run by these guys who are actually friends of mine, but they were like the, the guys who started Denver Comic Con. So they yeah. were from like a superhero background and they're like, let's do an indie show, but they didn't really understand indie comics. So I went there and they had like a, all this weird, like stuff you'd see at a mainstream comic show. Like, mm-hmm. uh, they had, like this guy, like uh, it was called fake Stan Lee. And he'd be walking around. Like he was impersonating Stan Lee. Like he'd be walking around like so weird making a spectacle. And, mm-hmm. uh, then because it's Denver, like they had this whole like weed tour in the middle of the show where everybody was supposed to get on a bus. Like all the people that were there to buy comics would get on a bus and then go like on a tour of dispensaries. So weird. It's like you just took everybody out of the show, man. Just, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was it was an okay show. The 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 worst thing about that was the first year they did it, they like invited like a lot of people, but they invited people that uh you know, they're going to like, they invited Sammy Harkum uh, and he, you know, so he was there and, and then the show wasn't very good. So he was just like shit talking the whole time. <laughs> like, I just felt like really bad. I just felt like, oh man, now he's going to tell everybody that the show sucks and then like the show's not going to grow. It was a, uh, yeah, it was not a good idea. Brian, do you have your new copy of Crickets? No, I haven't it's got so it. Good. It's so yeah. good. I want to get that. Okay. Yeah. Mine's in the mail, but it, it's you, coming. You, you order it from him directly, or where do you get it? I think that he just put a bunch in a bunch of distros. So, like, I ordered yeah. mine from the yeah. wig shop, web shop. Silver Sprocket has it, Secret Headquarters. If you get it from them, they give you a Yeah, a yeah I, wish I, I wish I bought it from them, even though I'm happy to support um, Bubbles Publishing. Bank. Yeah, yeah I don't think go so. To, I don't think Desert, that's true. We have Desert Island here, so they should probably have it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he probably bought a big stack. Yeah, it looks great. I'm excited. I have my crickets like I already they're out like sitting out, so I can't wait to like read through the whole Blood of the Virgin thing and, mm-hmm. and just really do like, one more. Is what? He, is his are his parents like were they in the film industry or something like that? Or is it just like me extrapolating from something? I think they are. Like they are, right? Yeah. They're in the movie theater, right? Yeah. Uh, they're like a couple uh, degrees of separation from like the Safdie brothers or something. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He had Can't a comic shop too, I think, uh, Sammy, right? With the, the guy, his partner was named Kramer. I don't know and about the, that. Yeah, there was a comic shop. I wonder if it's still open. Me and John P, when we were on tour one time, we stopped there to try and distribute our books. And I, I remember like I it was like Blamo number six or something i brought it in there to see if they would carry it and the guy kramer was like looking at it, he's like does sammy like this <laughs> uh, he's like no he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> we will not carry this yeah i can't remember it, was, it had a big ron Ricci mural on the front of it of the place family book it's gotta be cool yeah and then there was a you guys ever go to like the McSweeney store in San in San Francisco that has the big Chris Ware mural on the front? No. Did, did he paint it? Yeah, uh, he didn't paint it. He just designed it, and then they had somebody put it on there. Oh yeah, Todd. What Todd? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's called the Family Bookstore. That's what Sammy's bookstore mm-hmm. is called. Um, I've never been in California before. Well, comics are going to bring you all over the world, Nate. <laughs> You're going to see stuff. That nobody on your even Walmart on the ladder could ever see. What Walmart? <laughs> you said all over the world. I haven't been Walmart in a long time. <laughs> Maybe You're Red cool. Robin. Wait, no. Do you like Red Robin? I don't know what I that is. What is. Yeah, it? I love I love Red Robin. Red Robin's the best, Brian. I'm so I knew you would. I knew you would. Uh, yeah. They do this thing in the bottom of fries. Um, just keep <laughs> on getting them. They don't care. Yeah, I used to steal the seasoning, like the yeah, little yeah. bottle. Same, yeah. It's like actually so good. And you bring it home it's and incredible. it's incredible. Yeah, it's good at home too. Put on anything. Oh man. Have you guys ever been so broke that you've stolen toilet paper from a public bathroom before? 
Definitely. No, but I would always be like working in restaurants, so I'd have to I'd just take it from there. Yeah, it's like the giant roll. <laughs> People go over to yeah, yeah, we we roll. used to steal it from the college, and like uh, I lived at this like uh, punk house for like four years, and we had like shows all like a couple times a month and stuff, and like so like we had a lot. Of, we were it, like there was five of us that lived there, but it wasn't just us using the toilet paper. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like if I'm gonna like have like a hundred people come over and use my toilet, like I'm not paying for that. Like fuck yeah. that. So I would, we would always like steal the giant roll from the college, and then we would like be like, all right, that's what everyone gets to use at the show. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's shitty too. We'd be like, whatever, man. You oh. should have went before you got here, right? Or bring your own, bring your own BYOT, you know. But no, you got to you got to supply something. But yeah, I was in a yeah. bar the other day that was like so progressive. They had like a women's free tampon dispenser in the bathroom and i was like i'm at a time in my life i don't need like prison tampons like the the no applicator like roll your own shit but it was like a couple years I ago even, i never yeah. done that I, i'm I, sure I, all of you can relate to this anyway you, uh, ms actually i was just i a friend of mine had me go and speak about zines at the university of virginia at uva yeah in charlottesville and it was just like two weeks ago, and I, and I there was tampon machines in both restrooms. Well, I didn't go in the women's, but they had they had tampon machines. So a lot of how, times, still have I, them, but you have to pay for them. No, this was free. It, it was, was free. free. Okay. And I and I was pretty impressed. I thought, man, UVA's got it going on. Like this. it's bullshit it's just, that we don't have those. Yeah. So. Yeah, one of the things I used to do when I was a manager at a an Einstein Brothers Bagels. You guys know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I I used to. Uh, Whenever we get like a new employee, usually like a young teenager, I would uh, I would be like, before you go home, clean the restrooms. But I would take a pumpernickel bagel dough, and I would straighten it out and pinch the end of it. <laughs> I would put it, put it with a little bit of pan spray, so it's a little glistening. And I would go uh. put it, the toilet on the floor with just like a wad of toilet paper next to it. And I would just go back, and then I would send that young man in there to clean it up. Why would you do that? And it's so fucked. Watch their reaction. They come out like, oh, <laughs> they have to like wait till the customers leave. And then they're like, oh, I need to talk to you. And then a couple times, <laughs> the customers Man, I, or, I went in there and then they're all like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You need to have somebody go into the bathroom and clean in there. <laughs> but Man, like, was that there. was that before or after Panera? That was before. No, I, 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 I did Einstein's and then started working at Panera Bread and I, I uh, wouldn't. Uh, I, I was like a manager at Einstein Brothers, but then I wanted to be a cartoonist, so I just got a part-time job at Panera Bread after that, and just worked there as like a lowly uh, egg maker. No, that's a good joke, but I worked as a janitor, and I actually cleaned that like real mess up. Like, not it, it wasn't a it wasn't a bagel. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't pumpernickel. It, that's some humbling work right there. It is. It you, is the uh, worst. Thing. Cleaning restrooms and stuff. When you're going in there, and like the, the urinal always has like a little bit of pube sprinkled on it. I have, I don't even want. Right. Yeah, I worked at a movie theater too, and that bathroom was messed up. Yeah, man, that is the worst. You got to clean the. Yeah, it gets pretty gross. In know. Ohio, it's particularly bad because apparently sure. the opioid epidemic means you have a lot of people who are on heroin all the time, and then they're constipated for two weeks, and then they just destroy a Kroger bathroom. <laughs> Oh, wow. I never heard about heroin shits before. Yeah, it's bad because, yeah, opioids make you super constipated. Just got to push, you know? Please, yeah. everyone come. Actually, here we yeah, go. Dude. Nate, uh, for your That's reading, a- there's three different people talking about <laughs> shit and piss in comics, I think. Oh, very nice. Well, we got I piss- don't have piss or shit involved. Pisstopia. Just horses. Pistopia, yes. uh, Patricky and Rooks is gonna debut yeah. Pistopia, and then Pee Pee Poo Poo from fucking Carolyn. That's a title for sure. That's one and of then, the most titles ever. Emmy's gonna like, do a reading about trying. drinking urine, so this is gonna be great. <laughs> Mine is just uh, the guy fucking the pierogi with like no words, just moaning. I love that. Since I've started this conversation that started with toilet paper, I've been watching the the viewers drop off. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ride or die, bitch. Fuck this. I'm out of here. <laughs> How many do we have right now? 
Uh, oh. There were 37 people watching. Oh. oh, but we had 40, though. That's not that much of a drop off, right? That's kind of crazy. That's 40 uh, people. It, it fluctuates. So people, they go, I got to get out of here for now. And I'll, they, they dip back in, see what Nate's talking about. There's enough people where you could really ruin some people's day right now. It's like a lot of people's, like it could have a, it could affect. I'm not gonna tell any stories. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna indulge. But if you, you can come up to me, and I'll tell you a story one day. <laughs> about what? Wait, what are you talking about? Piss and shit. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I remember. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Never mind. Well, I think you should say it. Piss nah, and shit. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you about this. One time, my parents had to renew their vows uh -oh. last oh, summer. They had to. Well, that's what happens when you get bored and you're married. But you're gonna talk about the chicken, uh, the gift shop chicken. Well, I I was getting to it, but yeah. So <laughs> we were. They wanted to go to Florida of all places, and they wanted to renew their vows. And uh, and I was so hungry. Twenty four hours hadn't eaten, the, and I went to this gift shop with a chicken wrap and it looks so goddamn good. And I, but I bit into it and I said, Nope, this is fucked up. <laughs> and I took a couple more bites when I finished it. And, uh, and then we went to Bush gardens and I was shitting blood to the moon. Oh my God. Oh, it was just all blood. It was like, no, shit. it was just red. It was just all, uh, all right. it was kind of beautiful in a way, but oh, I had to yeah. eat a lie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's man. brutal. All right, yeah. let's change the subject. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm working yeah, on a – me and Ryan Holmberg, uh, are, I'm not, we haven't announced it, but I think I'm going to say the title. But we're working on another book, and so I've been working on that a lot lately. What you work on today for it? Um, so the art needs a lot of cleaning up. And so I, this is like the book, and I had to cut up the book, and I'm not going to show oh, you what don't it is. show but. that shit. But like we're just not far enough along for me to want to say anything. But like, uh, it's an old yeah, book you have to cut up, an old manga, I guess, or what? Yeah, yeah, it's another manga, and I cut it up so I could scan it properly. Yeah, it's I'm not... doing something similar. Oh How really? Many DPIs, bro? Yeah, I'm, I'm reprinting from six hundred. Oh, you're doing that? Yeah. So I'm so the, in the the book, it, I, it's basically falling apart. But I've been scanning in uh, the pages of it and cleaning them up. Uh, awesome. And then I'm gonna yeah, I have like a few kind of like cleanup projects in my like radar right now. I'm pretty excited, uh, but I can't say. But um, I'm pretty excited. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun photoshopping. I can I I can photoshop for a pretty long time, but it makes me a little crazy. But this book yeah. right now is it's it's three times as long as Bat Kid, and it has a lot more word bubbles, oh. and it, it has sound effects. So I'm like learning a lot. But it's it's been really fun. I can't wait for everyone to uh, to see it whenever. But that's what I've been like. As soon as I finished issue thirteen, I I, I just went straight. I did, did a lot of shipping, and then I went straight into like um, trying to get some work on this before I start working on issue fourteen. Cool. When is I it gonna about and... be done? What? Do you have like a, a deadline you're trying to for get the book? Away? Yeah. Yeah, the goal the goal is maybe like SPX or something like that. Okay. Kind of like it would be fun to debut it in person, um, just because we didn't get to do that with that kid. Um, what printer did you use on that kid? I really love that the way that book looks. Look how it came out. I used Marquee though, who Ad House uses it as well. Um, really good. It didn't come out perfect, but um, you know, I think like to someone who didn't make the book like it probably looks pretty good so i'm happy with it i think it looks really good yeah 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 i think it came out it came out pretty good there's you know i'm learning it's like a big learning just uh having fun the trading card is the perfect fucking addition because it's a bookmark and it's also a baseball it's like perfect thanks yeah i came but, up with that like literally like a week before it was like Oh, shit. All right, uh, guys, I got to head out. My son's, like, not going to sleep and driving my wife crazy. So I got to handle all right, that man. situation. Thanks for coming in. Nice Thanks for having you. me. Hey, yeah. Nice meeting you all. See you later. Um, yeah, I'm working on a, a, a book that I'm going to um, I'm gonna self-publish. 
And so I'm looking for a, I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. It's like a big learning. A book book, like a whole book. What are you trying to like figure out a printer and stuff? What's that? I gotta, yeah, I got to find a, a printer. Yeah. Um, I there was a, there, there was a, Nick Sam's what, like, uh, I used them on last thing, and uh, like Robert Sergal recommended them, and they're, they're so good and cheap and like fast, like, everything's good about them. Are you, you already, do books too? Are you already working on your next goiter, Josh? No, I'm doing it like I have two zines I'm working on right now. Oh, okay. what are they? <laughs> Um, I'm doing a split zine with Hanselman and a zine about this uh, guy that was in the last issue, Tedward. Tedward. Shit's funny as fuck. Tedward's a big hit. Um, <laughs> I was kind of interested. I forgot the name of the printer. Somewhere I have a paper sample. Um, Sean uh, Knickerbocker, who does uh, Rust Belt. He works at a printing place, and he prints Rust Belt there. That bookmobile. Bookmobile, yeah. Bookmobile in Minneapolis. And so I thought about – there was a smaller print run book that I'm interested in doing. I don't know when, but there was, like, this other – this another book I was interested in doing. And I was thinking about seeing how much their prices were just because it's in America. and it's, I did and it, Rotten with them. Oh, um, how – and was that cool? I think 300 – Maybe it, I don't remember if I had 300 or 150 copies, black and white, color cover. It was like 700 bucks. And then like I didn't have to get it shipped because I was there. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So I think with shipping, it probably would have been like 800. But um, yeah, I did a relatively small run. Did you there. ever, did you reprint Rotten? No. And I don't think I will just because it's like kind of a political comic, right? Like timely. And sure. then I'll collect it at some point. But um. Yeah, I mean, Sean helped me out with a lot of it too, and that like he just like was like, I know how to do this better. Like, I can just fix things. Yeah, I think I am gonna use them, but I I just need to finish with it. No, is that the book you're, you're gonna just do? announcing this now? <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm working on. I'm like I'm collecting a bunch of like uh, for art's sake will be in there, and boring will be in there, and then there's a couple other oh, stories. Nice. And I'm just gonna self publish it as this paperback book called Shame and Glory. I'm so glad you're reprinting those. It, is like my hot take gonna be in that too? I thought about it, but probably not because the you know Fanagra or uh, Kilgore just reprinted that. I don't want to do that. Right, again. right, yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. What about so, your? What about some really old minis? Nineteen ninety nine. I don't think, so. I, think I think I'm just gonna um, just keep it like all the like autobiographical mini comics. Like um, oh, okay. Just do like maybe like two hundred pages or something, and then print it as this little paperback book. But I'm I'm trying to learn how to do all that. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do like a Kickstarter for it or something. You know. Um, yeah and uh we'll see how it goes but this looks like a really cheap paperback you're gonna make the paper like the like this looks like the once upon a time in hollywood uh book you're gonna make it like super like supermarket paperback i love dude i would love that i, lo I like i want that uh you should, um, yeah that paper you know, stock it, inside. it's like um newsprints almost yeah when i did off. when i did bat kid i copied a paper from uh max huffman's cover not final because i really like the paper that was printed on and mm. so when i talked to marquee i just said hey you guys printed this book with ad house can i have the same book basically like, or like the same paper and yeah. then my and then i did a different cover and things like that but i really like the paper that back kid came on and i and I, I, I hope to that i don't know i keep hearing about these paper shortages i'm like i'm so scared that when i email them in like whatever three or four months or whatever they're mm. gonna be like we don't have that paper anymore and I'll be yeah. heartbroken because I want them to look the same. I heard yeah. it's going to get bad real soon. From who? <laughs> From Tom. Oh, fuck me. I guess I just, well, Tom works at, um, uh, penguin. No, not penguin. What's it? Maybe it's penguin. The You're making this up. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be, we're going to be just fine. <laughs> no, I'm not making it up. He works. He works for the kids department of one of those, like, Book publishers, Tom from Partners and Son. And he said, no, it's I believe you, but I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm nervous about that stuff too, but like, I, I, I feel like this was for that project. I'm just, I'm planning it now far ahead enough in advance that I'm hoping that, uh, like maybe by like next year or something, like early next year, I can, I'll know enough about how to run a Kickstarter and, and print a book on my own so that I can do it. And maybe the paper shortage will be over by then. 
<laughs> Probably not. I don't even right. believe it. I got paper right here. Yeah. <laughs> There's no shortage. Bristol, Bristol's going to get really expensive. Yeah. Well, then, computer paper. my newsprint now. Yeah. Yeah. You draw, uh, oh, no, never mind. Well, I was going to ask, uh, MS, do you ever draw a comic on computer paper only? Nope. Oh, damn. <laughs> Archival, bitch. It's fun, though. <laughs> it's going to last. I think, didn't Dash I'll do, like, a new school on computer paper? I don't know. He's your friend, man. How do you not know that? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've seen the stacks of the art, but I, I haven't like, held one, I guess. next, I haven't been to his house in a minute. He comes to my house. So does he, he keep all of his art, or does he sell it? No, he sells. I know he sells some of it. I don't know like the details, but he doesn't have all of it, yeah. You start selling more art right now, I like with uh, yeah. Sean. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with Sean Watkins now to sell stuff. Uh, I worry about selling too much. Like, I, I really worry about, like... Uh, just making it completely valueless in the future because there's so much out there. Mm -hmm. I worry about that a lot. Do you sell your work, Josh? Yeah, uh, yeah, like uh, probably more than I should. Yeah, I I, ne I never really did sell a lot of my work. Like every once in a while, I would post stuff on my blog or something. Or the Kilgore sold a few things for me, but I, I always kept everything. Uh, but now I have a kid, so I got to sell. Sell my work. <laughs> Just letting it all free now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what stuff I have left? You know, I, you know, there's stuff that I've donated. Like OSU has a lot of it. Like I gave a lot of my stuff to OSU. So um, I'm just. I only sell about five pages per floppy, which is like way too much. How, how many? Probably like five pages for each like floppy. Oh, how much do you sell your pages for? <laughs> uh, at the moment, like they're around like two fifty. That's good. Yeah. Like a lot of, yeah, some of them sold like, it was like 175 until recently I started doing 250. Yeah, I could never price my own work. That's why it's good to just work with somebody else and let them do it. Yeah. I've just kind of, and you know, we were talking earlier about like prices of shipping stuff. And one time I sold a drawing to somebody who lived in, in uh, Belgium. And uh, oh, fuck. hey man, when I shipped it to him, it took like half the money that he gave me for the drawing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I almost that almost happened to me with Australia recently because you can't ship anything to Australia right now. Yeah, it's uh, brutal. I, I like sold it and then I went to the post office and they're like, "Oh, it's eight dollars to mail this." Oh my god! So luckily, the guy who bought it was like really like you know understanding. And he's like, "I'll wait until it goes down again." Oh boy, I, I uh, somebody bought one of my mini comics from my big cartel a couple weeks ago, and he lived in Spain. And I didn't realize it. I just put like four stamps on the envelope and put it in the, in the mailbox. And it arrived. <laughs> it actually made it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You know, if it's under an ounce, I was posting about this because they make these stamps. If it's like around an ounce or under an ounce, you can buy these stamps. Oh, yeah. The COVID stamp. <laughs> this is, it's a flower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's oh. called a global stamp. <laughs> oh, yeah. The COVID what are they thinking uh, with that, man? <laughs> it looks like COVID. It does look like COVID. But I, I make screenshot that information right there. Oh yeah, I sent that because oh, I saved you, that shit. If you make a zine that's weighs not much, you can I make a zine and I have just half size envelopes. Mm -hmm. And if someone in Spain bought my zine, I just throw one of these stamps. It costs a dollar thirty-five. And 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 I just write their address on it and just mail it. And as long as it, and you can even make zines bigger than this. The biggest envelope that you can send to the USPS and still call it an envelope is like seven by 10 or something. Like it's way bigger than any like uh, letter than you would mm -hmm. think, but mm -hmm. you can get away with a lot as long as it weighs an ounce or less and uh, is in the thickness. It has to be a certain thickness, but yeah. um, I don't know. I sometimes I think working inside those like, working inside that restriction it will like just help you out like because i have like a lot of people who i think there's a lot of people who try who they ignore your work because they can't they can't afford i mean it costs more than an issue of bubbles to ship an issue of bubbles so i'm yeah. grateful for anyone who does that but at the same time it's i feel bad for them mm -hmm. yeah. it's but it's like again it's like i don't get that money 
it's like none, neither one of us are like winning from it. Or it just sucks. It just is. Yeah. Like, it's just a. It's just a bad thing. But yeah, I love the world stamp. Like uh, the USPS is does have a couple good deals. That and media mail, of course. Do you, do you sweat uh, a little bit, like when you go, whenever I go to the post office to send some comics that somebody bought, they're always. I'm always like, this is a. Just a this is just a document. To try and get like the cheapest. Oh yeah. hell yeah! Sure. Sure. I, 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 yeah. Like, please don't question me any further. I'm gonna break. I and should. Like, I should. My, the guy at my post office, he, like he knows what I'm selling because he's asked me. So I will go there sometimes. I'm like, oh, this is you know, after like everything is like tape, all this stuff is eaten into my profit. So I'll try and go sell it, uh, like ship it cheaper. Then he just won't let me. He's like, I know what's inside of it. I'm not letting you do it. He's like, you need tracking. It's, you you, know, you oh. just need to sh- ship it online yeah, and then drop it off and be like, like doing, yeah, that's what I did with this last issue. Oh, I gotta do that. I'm just like, uh, it's just uh, photocopies of drawings. Stuff Man, I've yeah, I've yeah. I've mailed all kinds of stuff like media mail. Like you throw yeah. a t-shirt in, yeah, media yeah, yeah. mail, Everything whatever. Media mail. Just Dan Stafford, like Dan Stafford, one time was moving to a new state. He like shipped all his belongings media mail, and he said he was amazing. A it's like silverware was in there. You get rattling around. Like, <laughs> it's media mail. <laughs> Wait, that's, that's amazing. Great. That's genius. Because it probably only cost him like 500 bucks yeah. or something. Yeah. It's like, and he was like young. So it's like, you don't really own that much stuff. You just, <laughs> look at all the post office. <laughs> you just do glass breaking in there. <laughs> that's an awesome, that's legendary. Yeah, man. <laughs> another yeah, you, you know, another, was, uh, another trick would be like, if you buy like, like if you have a record mailer, and, and if you take a record mailer, man, you put anything in the record mail, and they're gonna think it's records. And like and you can put it, you can put the media mail, but if it's not, you know what I mean? Like you throw a t-shirt yeah. or whatever you want, and it, but they're gonna look at this because they, they, I mean, I'm sure the USPS, everybody knows where the record mailer looks like because there's so many records being sent through the mail these days. Uh, they're not gonna question it. They're gonna look at it and go, oh, that's a record. Yeah, well, I never, I never thought of that. business, you know. What'd you say? I said they should just mind their own business. Stop exactly. They should straight yeah. up mind their own business. Like, Everything should be media mail prices. I, I just had a store hit me up in Hawaii and they were all like worried about oh. shipping. And I was like, oh no, media mail goes to Hawaii. And that's when you know it's all a scam. Because I can send 10 yeah. pounds to Hawaii for $8. But if you send anything else, like books, if you learn it's like books, you can send to Hawaii for like eight dollars. But if you send anything else, it's going to cost you way more. And you're like, why? It's the same fucking thing. Like it's yeah. just a box with stuff in it. Like don't worry about what's inside. Yeah, yeah, they want to know. Yeah, that is the word. Actually, it's it is kind of actually. I gotta say, it's like fun when you put a new comic out and then like you just you post about it and you get all the orders and then like you just know like the next few days you're going to be sitting at your kitchen table, like stamping envelopes and like. Uh, yeah. It's also there's something like I don't there's something like so nice about seeing all the names and the places. Yeah. Like, totally. Like, yeah. It's like I'm never gonna go to this town and it, you know it's like something yeah. amazing about that. Yeah. I I love that. I have a lot of readers in small towns in America and it really like warms my heart to know mm-hmm. that I'm mailing it to just like a random place in like North Dakota. And I'm like, wow, he's probably like whoever this person is. They're probably like the one person who just is like, love Noah Van Skyver. That's like your one fan in North Dakota. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, my dad lives there, so it's probably him. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, I didn't <laughs> plan it up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, it's like uh, well, other countries. You know, when you get somebody from like Sweden or something. Right? Totally. Yeah, I had like my first uh, like with this issue. I had like Thailand, Peru. Oh, wow. It's like crazy. Yeah, I just had some guy from the Philippines email me, and he was just like, he wanted to read your interview, Noah, someone. Huh. And he was like, oh, I, the post office here, it's basically like, it doesn't work. And they're like, and he, and I just sent him a PDF. I was like, I don't really care. I was like, I was like, don't share this around, but here, here's the Noah's interview if you want to read it. So you got well, that's a why it's like it's on all those torrenting. So. <laughs> you know what? That's karma for all the torrenting that I've done. So. Yeah. Right. Brian, do you do you do you have all of the uh, video? Not video. Like, do you save all like the recorded interviews you do for the Zoom? Yeah, I have I have them. On my well, you computer. know what? You, well, you know what you gotta do. No, if it's just ten or twenty. You know what you gotta do? Put them all on a CD. So That's can, a bad idea. 
<sighs> I just want to listen to them shits and uh, when I draw, I want, I want, because I know there's more than what's on the. I'll put one on a cassette tape just for you, whatever yeah. one you want. But you can't. Sammy Harcum. I want the Sammy Harcum one. You know that and one. Is, the, that uh, one's early enough that like I was and Sammy didn't actually re look over that interview. So whatever we said is probably basically what's in the interview. But there's tons where I look as the uh, the initial interview is just it's like a rough draft. It's like getting you a good conversation to then turn into a good interview. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. I mean, I feel like you can read any like good interview and. Like any of those TCJ interviews, you like read them and you're like, no way, that's like really what they said. Yeah, but it yeah, doesn't matter. Cleaning it up because it's like, like the end. end. My own bubbles interview. It was so like fucking. Uh, 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 uh. Oh yeah. Now, now I I'm so much better at typing them out and 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 fixing and editing, and uh, mm. so like when I send them to people, they usually get like already a pretty nice. It reads I because I started being like. They don't know, remember what they said. I'll clean it up. I like take these two sentences and make it one sentence because it's just way better. And it's like when they get it, they're never like, that's not what I said. They're all like, oh, it's so much better. It's, yeah. But, um, no, anyways, I no, I don't, I, the audio will die with me. Yeah, I did I like, me. early on in this channel, man. Like I was editing a lot of like the, so I remember the Jeffrey Brown one because the way, just the way Jeffrey Brown talks, he says like, um, like he gets like pauses between like every single thing he says. Uh -huh. I remember editing all those pauses out, and it's like you can see it. Like it's you not. Know, uh, I always wish every video was like two hours longer, though. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's like just when no, it's getting good. Of experience. I always feel like shorter is better, though. No, but these people are drawing when they're listening. Well, yeah, to they, they're drawing when they watch, so it's like. I want like an eight-hour. Give me like I eight have, hours or something, you know? I have because because I watch. I'm with, it I'm, with I'm with Noah. I like. I want it to be just the fat. Yeah. Well, the, the well, nobody really watches. Or the, cut the fat. Uh, What's the expression? I don't know. Yeah. Nobody watches the interview stuff really, though. It's like hard to get views on them, you know? I watch them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do. But, but you guys ever listen to the um, Sammy Harkham RIYL interview from like. I think so. I think like 2015. Literally the best interview ever done. It's so, it's so good. Because he gives like Sammy Arkham gives the best interviews ever. It's like forty five minutes, but you're seven minutes in. It feels like you're thirty minutes, and you can just listen to it over and over. It's so good. remember his Ink Studs interview? Did you ever listen to that one? I can't find I, that one. Oh really? That's good. Ink Studs is great, man. I love that. Oh, so good, so I good. I've listened to years on it. No, that's where I learned that you like the. You see every like blockbuster movie when it comes out. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used that's to. That's so yeah. wild to me. Well, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so I had, wild. I had. Uh, I, like I had a really good location. Like I lived in Denver, and I had like two indie theaters next to me, and walking distance, and then one like mainstream one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would just go see like every single movie. Like I, I remember yeah. I saw it in Dread like three times. I just, I just wanted to go see movies all the time. Did you ever see but the Butterfly Effect with Ashton Kutcher when it came? Yeah. Out? <laughs> yep. What do you think of that movie? <laughs> I can't really remember if it was good or not. That's one of the what I saw that movie and I was like nine. That's probably the coolest movie I ever saw in my whole life. Whenever I was nine. Yeah. Because it was like dark as fuck. The kid's head gets exploded on with a bomb in the mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about, uh, do you remember that movie, um, uh, Final Destination? That, that movie Hell yeah, I never saw that one. I love all those movies. They're so good. So scary, man. Because <laughs> I already yeah. I get nervous about flying anyway. But like that movie is terrible. That and uh, Castaway. Like movies I always <laughs> think about. I remember one time I was flying to a show and they have the little screen on the seat in front of me, and they were just showing like, on a loop like mo trailers for movies you could watch. And one of the trailers was for like an Iron Man movie where a plane explodes and like Tony Stark is flying around in his suit like picking people up as they're falling through the air. They were showing that shit like when I'm on a plane. <laughs> so <laughs> scared, man. <laughs> Those movies are so exhausting to watch. Yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm over that stuff. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, it I just, don't watch any of that. It keeps going, man. I can't. It's, it's it done. does. It does. It does keep going. And it's the same movie like every time. You know? Yeah, I just get so bored. Oh my gosh, so bored. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That was funny as fuck. No offense to armless people. Dude, you're like yelling. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> That's my roommate said I'm yelling. I got these headphones on. I'm trying to make it so there's no echo. Yeah, you're, uh, I can hear you through my headphones. <laughs> All right, cool. Enough of this then. <laughs> I can barely hear you, Nate. Keep yeah, good. I can. You good. It's all about communication, Brian. I like how your roommate sounds exactly like you. That's what happens. You also, you ever notice Robert Crumb and Dan Klaus and Aileen sound the exact same? They talk the exact same way. There's a cartoonist voice. There's like a there's like a voice that is like the cartoonist voice. Yeah. But no, you don't have it. You have your own. You have your own like. Well, yeah, name. I don't have it, but like. I don't have no, it. I meant Noah. Oh. But yeah. But you know what though? Name. If I was hanging out with Dan Klaus, I probably would start talking like him yeah you, you know like uh you just want to fit in you want them to like you so much that you'd start like a, copying the, their speech pattern yeah i wonder if uh there's jasper has it Terry's jasper has the cartoonist voice yeah jasper has the chrome uh, klaus swag off voice yeah i've never met that guy i want to one be cool. JJ? Yeah, he yeah. He's on. supposed to come to the retreat and he was like, Oh, I have a family reunion then. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm going I'm going to his family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Um, all right guys, I'm gonna end this stream now because we've been over two hours we've been on here. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good two hours. Hey, it was fun hanging out with you guys. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Yeah. I was yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good to see you guys. Bye. Thanks for putting this on, Noah. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.